I remember we'd go to like these dealer's house in Dallas and I'd sit there and there'd be like a guy sleeping on the couch and there'd be like pit bulls and just like glocks on the table. And I would just be like sitting there in like a little dress when we'd be picking up drugs. And I remember one time I touched the gun I like this and one of them pulled a gun on me and I was like, sorry. <laughs> I, was just, I was like, my bad. They're like, no touching. And then I was like, in uh, hindsight, that's a good rule. And then, role. like, my guy friend was like, she's cool, she's cool, she's cool. I was and like, like, we disagree. She's touching our guns. <laughs> I was like, I'm cool, man. <laughs> Seven. I cannot get a podcast intro out. Um, if I had editors here with me all the time and I worked in a fucking studio, I could just say, hey, use that first part and leave the second part. But I'm One Take Charlie. One Take Charlie Arley. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to a fucking one of my favorite episodes of Ari Shavir Skeptic Tank in a long time. Chloe LeBranch comes in. You don't know her. It's okay you don't know her. But my podcast is not about hearing people you know uh, tell stories they've said on fucking 17 podcasts. This is that crooked? Is about hearing a fucking amazing stories. And Chloe LeBranch has been to rehab a ton of times, and we talked about rehab, and it's fucking wild. I mean, this is a fucking clip machine. I just kept writing down. Look at this. Look at this. If you're watching on YouTube, clip, 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 uh, clip, uh, clip. And at some point, I just said, stop. I don't know. We've got enough clips for the episode. Go to youtube.com slash Ari Shafir uh, for clip choices. By the way, I'm going to be in Boston before I even get going. I'm going to be in Boston December 9th. Get tickets at AriShafir.com at the Wilbur Theater, the amazing Wilbur Theater. Who doesn't love the Wilbur Theater? Come on out December 9th. Get tickets right now. Good seats are going fast. They're almost gone, so hurry up. Get tickets at AriShafir.com. I'm also going to be in Tampa, uh, Florida with Steve Simone, uh, November 19th and 20th, uh, Oklahoma City. December 2nd through the 4th, San Antonio, December like 19th weekend, um, and Orlando, November 12th and 13th. But in Orlando, I'm going to be doing the Jew Hour. I've not done that in Orlando, and I'm just starting to dust it off again because who knows, but we'll see. Get tickets for all shows at AriShafir.com. Uh, Cleveland is now on sale. Phoenix should be on sale for next year. Denver should, Denver is on sale for next year. Um, that's it. Can I tell you guys? Well, let's take a quick word from our sponsor. Then I want to tell you uh, about this Dave Chappelle shit. So, sponsor word. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Guys, you ever have trouble just getting out of bed? I mean, do you ever just lay there for hours? Not on a weekday when you got to go to work, but like a weekend. When you're like, I could get up, I could socialize. But I just don't have it in me. Maybe just go downstairs to the kitchen and just, I don't know, get a, get a Gatorade or something. And you're like, damn, I just can't, dude. You know what you need? You need therapy. I know it's hard because you got to find a therapist. You got to get in your car. Get in your car. Are you out of your mind? I can't even go to the kitchen. I could use uh, some help. Or a zip line. A zip line would be great just to like, grab on you're down there in no time. But how about some online therapy? Online therapy at betterhelp.com. That's H E L P.com. Betterhelp.com. Uh, slash Ari. Uh, if you use betterhelp.com slash Ari, you get 10% off your order. Guys, they have, uh, it's just a helpful thing to get you back on your feet. They have um, financial aid available to qualify. Uh, I don't know the process on that, but check it out. And just, you know, get where you got to be. You can't just lay in bed all day. You know that's not what you want to do with your life. And betterhelp.com slash Ari. We'll just help you get back on your feet. It'll help you just go like, maybe there's more to life than just laying in bed till like, I don't know, till it's time to go to bed again. It sucks. Don't suck. Get your life back. With betterhelp.com slash Ari, get 10% off your first month. Well, thanks, sponsor. That was fucking great. Way to keep the podcast going. And now you're going to be inextricably tied to uh, fucking something that you had no idea about Dave Chappelle. Um, okay, so you know how... 
people, so you guys, I assume, if you're watching this podcast, you uh, have gone been to a comedy club. So you know what it's like. You know what it's like. It's dark. It's dirty. A lot of times it exists in down, literal basements. We're underground people. We're mole people. We want the dirtiest shit. I can say like, um, you ever seen a heroin act? And most of you have because you're dirty people. You're dark people. And then surface dwellers want to comment on stand-up comedy as if they know what the fuck it is. We're here to hear the darkest shit. We're here to laugh at pain. We're here to laugh at fucking whatever. We're here to punch up and punch down. We don't care. We're just here for the laughs. We like the, the laugh where you go like this. Oh, it's one of our favorite laughs. And surface dwellers, people who see the sun regularly, they want to take it away from us. They just don't understand. Similar point. Uh, we were all playing. Uh, we were in Miami, Florida. They do not like uh, jokes about uh, school shooting there, especially the white women, especially uh, 42-year-old white women. They, uh, listen, I entertain most crowds, but that specific crowd, I entertain most of them. I entertain most of them. But if you're going to hate me, chances are high you're from that group. Um, anyway, we're playing, we set up a bunch of paper cups, uh, plastic cups in a triangle. And we were playing this game. Uh, me, Big J, the staff at the Miami Improv, the great staff at Miami Improv. Thank you for the socks. Um, taking a little mini football and fucking throwing it, trying to knock it off. We're gambling, five bucks each. We're in the fourth round, and drunk Justin Silver comes over and is like, let me get a throw. I'm like, no, no, dude, we're doing something. And he goes, I got it, come on, I get it. And we're like, no, no, you don't understand. He goes, trust me, I got it. I'm like, trust you on what? He's existing in a whole different world, played by different rules. And then he came into our game, a gambling game, <laughs> and he just says, no, no, I understand this. But he has no understanding of it. So what they'll do is, surface people, they'll put quotes uh, on stand-up comedy, completely removing it of all context. They'll be like, Dave Chappelle says trans people are quote-unquote hilarious. And it's like, well, there's definitely more to that. Um, uh, they just like misquote it left and right. And it's like, you're not part of this game. It's like if you're watching a football game, like how come the white guy gets it every play and the black guy only gets it some plays? And you're like, what? You'd be talking to a woman most likely who doesn't watch sports, but she wants to spend time with her man. So what she does is sit down there and fucking you, annoy you uh, and her husband so you can just sit there and have to listen or try to, Joppa, just shut the fuck up and bring us some goddamn wings. You're good at that. You like it. Why, why you, I don't go in there. I'm like, oh, well, you got honey mustard? Uh, that's, uh, that's interesting. What do you got, dry run? Is that a dry run? Just shut up. How about just observe until you fucking know the sport and you don't know stand-up comedy? The reason why the white player gets it every time and the black player only gets it sometime is because the white player is the quarterback and he gets what's called the snap. And then on some plays, he gives it to the black player who's known as the running back. Sometimes, people who don't watch football, there is a black quarterback and on those teams, he will get it every time. There is never a woman quarterback. I don't know why. There is also never a white running back. <laughs> a white running back. That so that white guys never get the ball from the black guy. Unless it's thrown. Anyway, so criticism abound about Dave Chappelle's special, which is pretty much from I haven't watched it yet. Uh probably the same uh, you know, subject matter as his last two specials. You ever see somebody get upset now about shit that's been around? Uh, if you ever hang around younger people and they're like, can you believe this new thing about Israel and Palestine? <laughs> and then everyone over 35 is like, no, what? They've just never seen it before. Um, uh, oh, wait, there was an example of that. Please say I'm recording. I am. You guys get tickets to fucking, oh, Yoga with Ari. Every Monday we got two left for October. Um, go to youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. Uh, it's not the right place for it. So, executives are always bound by this weird thing of going like, ah, I got to bow down to this fucking anger from the surface people who don't even understand this. And for the first time, a network executive goes, uh, hey, you guys, Ted Sarandos, who owns, I guess, or CEO of Netflix, the people own Netflix. Um, he spoke up and he was like, guys, pretty much, paraphrase, you guys just don't get how this works. This is just not, this is not that. He's actually not shitting on trans people. He's making jokes. 
And you're like, well, it's harmful, but it's like, no, that's such an abstract idea. Any comments on that? Let me read you what he said. Um, in a uh, uh, company-wide memo that Variety obtained through a narc. Um, okay. We know that a number of you have been left angry, disappointed, and hurt by our decision to put Dave Chappelle's latest special on Netflix. Also, we have many new colleagues who want to better understand the principles that guide our team's content choices, especially with challenging titles like this. Titles? What does that mean? Why have you already lost me, dude? I watch stand-up comedy. Why have you already lost me? Look at that, how dark it got behind a cloud. Oh, it's so much nicer. Our goal is to entertain the world, which means programming for a diversity of tastes. I like that. Yeah, it's like, here's the world we're in now. That like, if one person's not into it, compare it to music. Where it's like, well, I don't like, well, I do like punk rock. But if somebody's like, well, I don't like punk rock. And you're like, you don't have to listen to it. It's like, but it's on the radio. I'd rather go be off the radio. I'm like, but you don't even listen to the station. You listen to R&B. You're like, yeah, but I don't like punk rock. Can you imagine like protest? So here's the two worlds you could possibly be in. You can either be in the world of let me watch the fun that everyone seems to be having. Or you can be in the world of let me be angry at the fun that everybody's having. And the only way to do that and morally live with yourself because you're in the same position as people who like wanted to stop smut in paintings. You know, I'm like, oh, this is smut. This is uh, uh, pornography because you're painting a naked woman. Or the people who hated uh, uh, rap lyrics because they were cursing or speaking about fucking fun times. Um, the only way you can do that is to have a moral high ground. That's the only way you can do it. Otherwise, you know you're just anti-art, right? So that's what they've done. They've had this moral high ground. And the moral high ground they've taken is that these jokes lead to real-world things, real-world violence. Okay. So he goes on. He said, with the closer, that's Dave Chappelle's new special. Everybody watch Dave Chappelle's new special. And while you're there, watch Ari Shafir's last double special, double negative on Netflix. Now, I would start with the second part, adulthood. I think that's the funnier part. Would have switched it if I had to do it over again. I wanted a randomizer on there. So no matter when you played, it would just like randomly pick one because it was like neither part is, is more than the other. Okay. He goes, with the closer, we understand that the concern, because I'm sure he's been talking to these people, is not about offensive to some content, but titles which could increase real-world harm, such as marginalizing already marginalized groups, hate, violence, etc. Well, he goes on, last year we heard similar concerns about 365 days and violence against women. While some employees disagree, we have a strong belief that content on screen doesn't directly translate to real-world harm. I mean, that's a crazy claim, dude who's definitely had help writing this because it's very, very well written. <laughs> That's all right. You're allowed to have help writing it, but this is very well written, Ted. Um, but that's a crazy claim that says it doesn't live. Do you have any data that supports this? Hmm. Let's see. Um, oh, well, here's one. Studies including research from, a 20, from 2016, that's recent enough, right? Conducted by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Psychological Association, those seem like legit groups, they back up Sarandos' assertion specifically around the effects of screen violence. Huh. Well, like screen violence, have, it's increased over the last 30 years, doesn't increase actual violence. So scientific research doesn't back it up. It's like when you go to your doctor and they say, quit smoking. You're like, tobacco. They're like, yeah, but everything. And you're like, but are there any studies that show weed affects this negatively? And they go, well, can't help. And you're like, no, no, you can't just say it can't help. That's spoken like a true fucking addict. Uh, the strongest evidence to support this uh, is violence on screens has grown hugely over the last 30 years. This is back to Teddy, Teddy Sarandi especially with the first-party shooter games, and yet violent crime has fallen significantly in many countries. Adults can watch violence, assault and abuse, and enjoy shocking stand-up comedy without causing them to harm others. Well, I disagree, Ted. You've never been to comedy clubs. You haven't seen me make fun of fucking uh, overpriced pizza, and then that crowd gets out and riots. They burned down Ben's Pizza Shop. You weren't there, Ted. They're burning down multiple pizza shops. You get to Subway. You don't think Subway cars are getting pushed over every day? It's because you're backwards and you're living in a bubble, a bubble of Netflix. 
In this special, he says, uh, uh, Chappelle makes harsh jokes about many different groups, which is his style and a reason his fans love his com comedy and commentary. That's right. His fans come for the fun and they get the fun. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art, by nature, is highly provocative. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art, by nature, is a highly provocative. Hey, Ted, you there was a, there was a typo in that. You, you don't have the A in there. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art by nature is a uh, highly provocative. You don't even, uh, it's just, it's highly provocative. Whoever your secretary is, Mrs. Randos, I would suggest you fire them and get them on board with starting to protect these pizza shops that are getting burned down every day by jokes about overpriced pizza. Stand-up comedians often expose issues that are uncomfortable because the art by nature is highly provocative. Do you hear that, everybody? And even stand-up comedians? Apology accepted. As a leadership team, we do not believe that the closer is intended to incite hatred or violence against anyone per our sensitive content guidelines. Yeah, sure. We've had these operating principles around pleasing our members and artistic expression for many years. And the team's decision to put the closer on our service was consistent with them. So thank you, Ted Serrano. He goes on, he goes, uh, variety, quality of content is what members value most. Our hope is that you can be hugely inspired by entertaining the world while also giving you titles which strongly believe have no place on Netflix. This will not be the last title that causes some of you to wonder if you can still love Netflix. I sincerely hope that you can. Also, Netflix has children's programming. I don't fucking watch that. Doesn't mean I'm gonna get, whatever. So. Ooh, we're almost done. We're almost ready to start the episode. So what does that mean, you guys? What does that mean? Finally, an executive has backed up the art form, has said, like, guys, guys, these are jokes. These are jokes, and they don't lead to... And this jump you make of, like, well, this can actually cause harm is just not based in any scientific research. In fact, scientific research proves the opposite. So now that you have science that you seem to believe in. Remember those posts they always make? We here believe in science. We believe in equality. We believe in love. Science is on that fucking, you're going to take that off all your fucking things on your lawn? You're going to take off all, all your signs on your lawn? You're going to cross out the science part? So number one, let's protect these fucking pizza shops from the animals that attack pizza shops in stand-up comedy. And number two, how about some more executives? Take note and join in. And now, Netflix, now that you've said that, can you fucking start to, now that you've made this massive gain, can you start to protect the little guys? Can you start to protect stuff like Adrian's Parkland joke? I'm not even accusing you. I'm saying like, now that you've done this, now that you've put the word in play, can you start protecting things like Adrian's Parkland joke? Where it's the same thing. It's not meant to incite any violence or hate. It's meant to entertain the people who would be entertained by it, who are watching the uh, fucking the, 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 the Degenerates on Netflix. It's called The Degenerates. So from here on in, and maybe even on your YouTube account, could you put up her fucking unedited... Oh, what a good idea. Can you put up her unedited Parkland joke? That at the time, you you weren't able to stand up for stand-up comedy, but now you are. Oh, you guys should put up... Oh, what a good idea. Put up Adrian Apolucci's Parkland joke on Netflix's YouTube account or a single clip of mine. A single clip. Please, come on. I've asked. Um... But anyway, let's hope that this now, Dave Chappelle and Ted Sarandos has broken down some barrier and we can start fucking doing this shit with telling those people like, you don't understand this sport. You don't understand it. So get the fuck up back to the surface. Let the mole people uh, laugh at dark degenerate shit. I'm going to be promoting the fucking uh, attributes of heroin uh, in my stand-up comedy. I'm hoping you don't get into heroin, but I'm not going to shy away from talking about how fucking sweet it looks. You know, everyone has their thing and you might not like it and it's okay. Just, I don't know, put your hands over your ears and move on. Thank you. Finally, one goddamn executive, Ted Sarandos, for fucking sticking up for us. The rest of you, we'll, we'll, we'd love to have you in and comedians too. Fucking just stand up on the comedy side every time. It's an art form. Quit it with the fucking anti-science shit. Anyway. Let's start this episode. It's a great one. It's a great one. 
Uh, Chloe LeBranch, by the way, don't forget to subscribe whenever you're listening to this. Tell your friends. If we get to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, go to youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. I'm giving uh, box, box Muncher Marissa Pellegriso, uh, I know that's not your name, and Kyla Fox, $100 a week raise. So if you support women, subscribe on YouTube. Go uh, watch uh, Yoga with Ari. It's every Monday in October. Um, also on youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. That's it. I got nothing else to promote. The Wilbur Theater, December 9th. Get tickets at AriShafir.com. And uh, um, I don't know, my old special's on here on my YouTube account. And go watch my fucking Netflix special, Double Negative, where I talk about being pro-abortion, pro-murdering children. Um, <laughs> what if after my special came out, there was a rash of just fucking abortions? <laughs> uh Anyway, you guys, Chloe LeBranch was fucking great in this episode. Um, make sure to follow her at Chloe LeBranch. And uh, that's it, you guys. Let's start. Archie for Skeptic, episode 443. Girl interrupted. Rehab. Gotta go to rehab. No, rehab. Uh, fuck. Rehab. Rehab retards? No, that can't. I can't. I can't use that. Oh, I had a fucking title for it. Rehab. Maybe just rehab. Rehab retard. Eh. I'll think of something. All right, you're skeptic. Episode four six four forty three. I don't know. Rehab. Uh, starts now. Where should we go? Oh, I know. It's a lot about Coke use, too. So if you're going to be triggered by getting back into Coke, if you want to, watch the episode. And if you don't want to, dude, I don't know. I might stay away. <laughs> it sounds so fucking cool. Her life at 16 was cooler than mine has ever been. Oh, what a fucking good episode. All right, here we go. Start the episode. Chloe, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Just enjoyed my cigarette until you ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it makes you stink. No, you're just saying that I'm going to die, basically. You'll live forever. I was on a comedian soccer team. Like, they have a soccer team that's like all comics. Really? Mm hmm. And I would smoke cigarettes like on the sideline before I'd go in. Yeah, you have to. Or drink. Hmm. We, used to, we used to drink in college. You'd drink like Boone's Farm in, a, in, a, in like a cooler. What's that? Is that from like the 1800s? No, Chloe, it's not. It's, um, I was doing Four Locos. It's kind of a precursor to that without the caffeine, but it's like the same. It's cheap booze. Mm -hmm. Get you fucked up. It's wine, Ew. but like $3 wine. Oh, boy. Yeah, but not the Trader Joe's $3 wine. It's like shitty wine. Boone's. You know, never had Boone's Farm? Where'd you yeah. go to college? I went to SMU in Texas, in Dallas, Southern Methodist University. What was the big booze there? For Loco? What year was it? I went there in 2009 or 2007, 2008. 2008. Yeah. I should know. Yeah, it's like they didn't have Boone's Farm. My what do they have? What my little brother, he just went there and he's uh, he just graduated. And when he got there freshman year, there's the campus police. And he said to him, LeBranch, he was like, is your sister Chloe? And he remembered me from 10 years later. The cop? The cop. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you were that much trouble. That was a little bit of trouble, for sure. Um, here's what I want to talk to you about. Okay. Well, we can fuck around first at all. You've been gaslit. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I won't start. Here's what I'm starting to do now for these podcasts. I'm trying to start like 15 minutes in because my theory is it takes people a minute to warm up, myself included. I feel like we've been warming up. We have been warming up. That's <laughs> not a sexual thing, you guys. Um, I mean, you did have your your top off. Yeah, sorry about that. Just so you could do a segment on the street of celebrities just like us. Ari planted, <laughs> planted the, rented an Airbnb for these people just so when he came outside, they could be like, excuse me, are you Ari Shafir? Look like a big shot. <laughs> yeah. Are you Ari Shafir? Dude, I had that happen once in, um, in uh, um, L.A. I was walking with my scene partner for acting class, and she was so fucking hot. And then somebody was like, hey, you're a comedian? And this was like, I wasn't doing anything then. I was like, uh, yeah. And they were like, we saw you in like Washington, D.C. I had done a guest set. Wow. And I was like, what? And then she was like, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to get some pussy. And but did, did, did you? not. No, no. She was like, you're terrible at acting. You don't pull from any experience. <laughs> she was so hot. Jocelyn something. 
She was like too hot. You ever have somebody too hot that you're like, I don't know how to talk to you? No, because I'm up there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like entitled hot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. No, we're not going to talk about any of that stuff. Don't worry. Back, back to me being hot? We're not talking. We don't even talk about that. No, that we can talk about. What would you rate your... No, we're not doing that. Um, I mean, here's what I want to... What? Depends. In rehab, hard 10. Rehab is a hard I, 10. I'm hot. In re- I'm like a hot as Paul. Yeah, because what do you get in rehab? You get really like... What, I, I assume it's like leather skinned like... Uh-uh. It depends where you go. It depends where you go. Um, okay. You know, it's the most important thing to do in rehab is when you get there, just go about the scene and get a boyfriend right away. You really? I mean, yeah, I've had like two rehab boyfriends. Um, it uh, why it makes it better? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because you're an addict, so you gotta you gotta transfer the addiction right away. They say I remember like I wasn't a big smoker, and then the first time I went to a treatment, they call it treatment, but I just like rehab, you know. Yeah. Because it's more fun to call it that, and then um, uh, they're like, if you don't smoke cigarettes, you should start. You should start. Uh huh. Because you need something to put the addiction on. Yeah. Damn. I remember being outside smoking with a bunch of these like girls who were like big heroin addicts and they're like I'm just like ripping my cig and they're like, You smoke cigarettes like a drug addict And I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> I was like, Oh my god, thank you. I am a drug addict. That's so nice of you. Because like sometimes in rehab, like I remember feeling like a lot of rehab shame when yeah. I first went because everyone would be like, You don't do heroin. You're kind of really? a, you're a loser. Damn. Like, you can't sit with us. Like, you go sit with the alcoholics. Like, you're a loser. Because you don't do heroin. I'm like, I'll show you guys. So you got to spend, like, a whole summer smoking crack and get back there and be like, I'm fucking I did it. I did it. And they're like. Where's Margaret? Oh, Margaret's dead. They're like, we do ketamine now. (laughs) What did you do? What was your choice? What was your drug of choice? Booze. Um, first. Definitely booze. That was my. I never call it booze because I'm like, that's not really my generation. Like, I feel like we don't call it booze. We don't either. It's a throwback. Is it? Yeah, it's a throwback to cowboys and shit. Oh, to, oh, like Robert Redford? That's a problem when I listen to like the 60s stuff. All my friends you are like- You have like a hair. Yeah. A women's hair. Oh, really? There you go. You get edit that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but if you listen to like any 60s songs, you'd be like, is this from your childhood? And you're like, no, it's- what? It's last week. You can get into music from before you. Oh. Yeah, booze is just like a throwback term. Oh, like I'll start doing stand up and calling everyone gal? Yeah. Okay. I'll be like. <laughs> but now watch, when you turn like 45, if you keep saying that, all the younger homies are going to be like, is that what they talked like when yeah. you're young? You're like, no. And I'll be like, everyone's got, you know, COVID. I got scarlet fever. <laughs> <laughs> is there, there's got to be someone doing jokes like that. Yeah. There's got to be somebody doing like old person jokes <laughs> <laughs> of COVID. <laughs> Wait. So, first of all, I don't yeah. know, we even know where to start with this rehab shit. I'm really ADD, so you're going to have to really direct okay. this. Where did you, when did you bottom out? Like, who who tells you, hey, it's time for rehab? I told myself. Oh, obviously, I got to go in with this Amy Winehouse song, Rehab. Yes, yeah, It's too on the nose, but it's such a great song. I, I actually, choose four rehab-related songs. I actually watched recently on YouTube her video of her last performance. The wreck performance? It was so sad. I had to stop. Why? Say, like she was like couldn't she was like falling and like she couldn't sing and like there was I think it was like one of her bodyguards or s- someone on the stage like pushed her back towards the mic when she was like swaying to start singing and then the fans are like start singing the words at her and it's like just let her leave. Yeah, let her leave. It was the last performance before she died. Really? Mhm. Ugh. Yeah, let her just be done. You know? I'm going to move over here. It just seems like, yeah, like uh, there was that, did you see the documentary? Yeah. Yeah, and she was like up there, she goes, I don't want to do this, and the, all the background like players are just like, all right, we're just gonna keep playing, and like <laughs> and like doing their do up, and somebody's like, get up there, and then you can tell on their voices, like, we getting paid regardless? Do you ever think like at a wedding, you know how when they do, um, does anyone have anything to say or forever hold your peace? Do you uh, think anyone's ever like, don't do it, and then they just are like, Hit the music. We're doing it. Like, do you think they just like? Do you think they? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how often is that effective? Yeah. Forever hold your peace. Someone's like, listen. I mean, it's got to be because the father who doesn't want him to get married, he's already said it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, people like that have already said their piece. The ex boyfriend's already mentioned it. It it would be a very rare moment where you're like, oh, like no one knows, but I'm like, 
ah, he cheated on you. But then you think if they're like, he cheated on her, like, do you think, what's the probability of that even stopping the marriage? Do you think they're like, all right, get this guy out of here. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, if she's like, I don't know what you're talking it's about. The same way, it like, would ruin the marriage. Like this, No, it's the same way with the Amy Winehouse thing. They're like, we're just going to keep playing. <laughs> we're <laughs> yeah. just going to keep playing. And she's like falling off stage like, uh. <laughs> There's a story about Red Fox coming out in Vegas. Okay. And Vegas shows, like casino shows, like, they just pay you. It doesn't really matter who's there. Mm-hmm. They're paying you to like bring people to the casino, but they just have budgets. So like, um, what are you doing? Oh, taking your credit cards out in case we get to a gold card. Interesting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he comes out and they play the the Sanford Son uh, theme song. His, his like whatever, like dun, 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 dun. and he comes out and there's like twelve people there because it's a Monday. And he goes nah, and he just like leaves <laughs> and just goes and they just start playing the song again. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Oh, that's crooked for sure. So wait. Yeah. Who put you into rehab? I put myself. You put yourself in. You said yes. I'm. I can't handle it anymore. Yeah. What were you on? What were you doing at that point? That point, the first time I went, I was um, like 26, I think. Okay. I was dating this guy, and um, I really liked him. I thought I don't really know, but I um, I had had like some pro. I had definitely had some problems before. Like I just was like a big partier. My identity was like very wrapped around. Where? New York? Uh, I was in New York. My identity was just very wrapped around, like, getting fucked up. I was very much, like, party girl. Yeah. Like, in the scene, like, New York party girl. And, like, in high school, I started, that's when I first started, like, I started drinking when I was younger, obviously. Then in high school. In I, high school? When, no, before that. Before high school? Well, yeah. Oh, I love these. I love people who bottom out, like. No, I didn't bottom out, but I did, I started doing coke when I was, like, 16. What? Wow, is that young? Not for not, yeah, not for New Yorkers. So, so you know the Strokes. Yeah. You know how they're like raised in like new, the rich New. York? You're a rich kid, right? I don't know. <laughs> this reminds me like a first, second, third, fourth podcast I ever did. Uh, it was with this kid Benji, and it was supposed to be about growing up rich. But he kept going like, "What do you mean? I'm not rich. I don't. What do you, I'm not rich." And it's like, and then he was talking about his yacht. <laughs> but he was like, it's a small yacht compared to other people. I'm like, dude, oh, so you can't even tell. What do you mean you don't know? Where'd you grow up? What neighborhood? Um, I grew up, my parents live on the Upper East Side. And then I grew up also out in Long Island because I'm from a huge family. Oh. So I'm one of seven. Okay. So I have five brothers and one sister. And then when I was in high school, my parents moved back to Manhattan because I went to boarding school. Boarding school. I feel like you're probably a rich kid. It's not an insult. I don't know. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't know. That's so, but like, yeah, so everyone was doing, everyone got into Coke when we were like 16, 15. Because it's New York. That's the other thing I just realized. Like, you're in the par- one of the big party cities. Like, oh, of, of course. course it's going to be around. And you're bored. You're in boarding school. It's boring sometimes. And you kind of like, they get, your parents are like, they give up supervision of you. They give you to someone else. But, you know, there's a lot of teachers, but they're watching a lot of kids. Yeah. Um, my The school I went to was like super elitist and it was, it was really great. But like, I kind of... Uh, I was always like the best at everything I thought when I was younger and then when I went there I was just not the best anymore at all and I was like ah I got to get kind of I was like I got to get good at something else so I just like to party you got good at coke well then when I was 16 I um started doing like coke and all my friends were doing it we were like really into the club scene in New York so what is this when in like 2004 or something oh damn so That'd be the best time to do it it's like yeah it was like when Lindsay oh. lohan was at bungalow and all that so we would like i'll go to like when i was like 16 on the weekends we'd go leave boarding school and we'd all go into new york city and i had like a vacant apartment i'd go stay in whose it was like my parents they weren't because they were out whatever okay. cut that and then what i don't no. know and then um <laughs> it's all right and then um for the record i I'm pretty positive you're a rich kid. Not that it's a problem. Yeah, but like, my parents are okay. really good parents. There's just like a lot yeah. of kids, and everyone was doing the same thing. It was yeah. like all the kids, everyone's doing the same thing of all my friends. And I, the reason I want to know if it's rich kids because also you have access to be able to pay for shit like that. Whereas like poor kids, like I don't have money for coke. I don't have coke money. Yeah, I guess I didn't really know because I was younger. Right, right, right. But um, so yeah, so then I was like really into the club scene when yeah. I was like 16. Where was Bungalow? Bungalow is on 27th and 10th, and all. Would those... she spin there? Who? 
she DJ there? Who? Or she sang. Uh, uh, Lindsay Lohan? Yeah. No, she would just be there partying. Oh, okay. And that was like that era. And like, so I remember we'd go to Bungalow on Sundays because Sundays were like the big night at Bungalow. And then I'd always go to like um, Butter on Monday nights. It was Butter Mondays. In the summer, we'd go to Marquee Tuesdays, Tuesday Baby Tuesdays at Marquee. And then Kane had Tribal Nights sometimes, which was super fun, which is now probably would be canceled. Why? Because I, I guess that's probably like, can't call something Tribal Night anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> like we're dressing like Africans. Like what? Which Africans? <laughs> no, I was just on coke, so I looked really thin. And they're like, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then so then that's, when I, first of all, there's, that sounds awesome. It was super fun. Yeah. What kind of music was it? Oh, I it was like Justin Timberlake, like "Sexy uh, Back," that song, like that. I remember that song like super well from back then. Yeah, I was like, "No, come on, be like, this is my shit." And you're like standing like at a table, and we used to always get like champagne. One of my friends would like put like strawberries in it, and we'd be like, "This is so dope." <laughs> I remember we used to always joke, because we were like 16, but we would never wait online. We would just like go straight up and like just like cut every line. Yeah. Because we're like, just these like, I don't know. And uh, I remember we'd be like, "Um, the only lines I do are up my nose. Excuse me. At 16? And we were just, we're fun. And then, but then when I was like 16, I had a, you know, Marquis? No. The nightclub? I wasn't here for any of that. No, I do. I've heard of it. I think Where Chappelle had his party there recently. That was Marquis? Yeah, that's okay, Marquis. Yeah. So I used, we used to go there a good amount. And uh, I had a. I Did you a, go to that? No. The comedian's ball? I wasn't invited. No, everyone's invited. It's um, for all comedians. Am I, am I a comedian? Had you heard about it? Yeah. Then you were invited. Oh, okay. Next time. But literally, that's what he does. Like, he has someone at the door who just knows the comedy scene. Oh. Mm. And then they'd be like, yeah, it's a comic. That's I went comedian. to one the other weekend. A Chappelle party? Yeah. What was the that? The one at the stand when he was here like two oh, weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Ago. He was doing a show. Yeah, and then he, he really did like- turn those into parties, And huh? then they were like after parties and I was like standing there and I was like, I didn't really know I was going to go because I was just like, I didn't even know what was going on. And I was wearing like a white turtleneck, like a little scarf. Uh-huh. And I was just like standing downstairs and Ian Lara goes, your whiteness is making me uncomfortable, Chloe. <laughs> and it's all like rap songs. <laughs> and so I was like, how does everybody know the words? <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, ah, and then I go, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. And I guess Ian says to Karen, she's never coming back, is she? Because <laughs> I'm like sober. I'm like, I feel it's so oh, yeah. awkward. First of all, it's a lot of black and also it's a lot of boozing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's not your scene. Yeah. Um, okay. So I was at Marquee and yeah. I had a, I was like doing, I had never done like m- probably more Coke than that in my whole life. Did you go to the bathroom to do the Coke or did you just do it right there? You do it like in the bathroom or like, you know, like bumps. And bumps to the table? I don't know. Bumps really, to the bathroom. Oh, no, I don't know. Both. I don't remember. Or okay. you like pour it out in the back. I don't, I don't remember. I saw somebody doing it at the cellar once or the upstairs, the olive tree, just on a cell phone. At the olive mm. tree, and look, whatever. I've been around Coke. It's not that. It's not the biggest deal, but it was like, even for that, was like Jesus. Mm. It's so public here. This is just a restaurant. Yeah. It's like I, don't, I love when people get casual about drug use. I remember in high school, like one of the first times I did Coke. It's like I'd been smoking weed, obviously, for like years, and I didn't really know what you do on Coke. So we yeah. we did Coke, and then we ordered food. And the food came, and we're, like, trying to eat, like, chicken Caesar wraps, and they're just, like, falling out of our mouth. And we're like, we don't really know what to do on cocaine. Because, like, I had never done, we had never done coke. We just, like, saw one of our friends, older sisters, had her phone, and she was, like, in the bathroom or something. So we took her phone, and we found a number that said, like, white. So we just took the number and called it. And we're like, hi, can we get some white? And the dealer just met us. Wow. And we're just like, all right, here we go. Did you ever have a dealer go look at you and be like, "No, your guys are kids." No, never. We're their, we're their, we're their demographic. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I was at Marquee when I was like, I guess I was sixteen, and then I um had done like so much coke, and I was so tiny then. I guess I'm pretty tiny right You're now. You're pretty small, yeah. Like Olsen twin. But you coked up, and sixteen would be like, yeah. And I uh. I would wear spanks, like those things to make you like skinnier type of thing. But I would wear them just so I would put my Coke in my spanks. So I'd have like Coke, cell phone, a pack of cigarettes. What, like tucked into like, the- Like tucked onto the side, like compression shorts. Oh, yeah. Like Wait, that. there was no bulge? I don't have a dick. 
Oh, but no, I'd be wearing no, like a dress. Of the coke. I, no, but I'd be wearing a dress. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not like packing like an ounce. Okay, okay. I mean, even, a kilo, even, even a like bulge. This, even like a little, like a like that much. Dude, one time at the stand, his much I love coke heads because they're such a specific type of drug addict. Mm-hmm. They're the most embarrassed about it and love finding out who else is into it. And then they like think that they're so secretive and they start like going around together, like doing it. They think they're so secretive. They think they're so secretive. Honestly, cocaine is the most boring drug. It's like you just go there and like you get these dudes who I remember I used to do coke with. Like I dated this one guy who went to Princeton. He was so boring. Every time we would do coke, all he would talk about is history. Yeah. And I'd just be like, I don't care. And we'd be up to like seven in the morning and he's just talking <laughs> about like all the wars. He's like, honestly, my favorite period is antebellum. And I'd be like, get me the fuck out of here. But <laughs> Cokeheads think they're so, they think everything they're saying is so important and interesting. And they're just talking over each other. Yeah. And then like, then I was at a bachelorette party recently and it was like these girls doing coke and like in their like, everyone's like 30. And I'm like, Okay, first of all, everyone is just behaving right now like we're at a fucking business meeting shouting out Shark Tank ideas at each other (laughs) right now. (laughs) Meanwhile... You're two months pregnant. You're doing blow because you're in denial. You hate your life because you just moved to Greenwich. Your husband's cheating on you. We got no businesses here. And then they're just like yelling out. They're like, I think you should name your son Tom. And they're like, uh-uh, go, go, <laughs> go with William. Tom's overdone. And I'm like, this is what we're doing on cocaine now? <laughs> Raging about your son's names. <laughs> this is what we're doing now? It's like, it's insane. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it I is mean, a weird I was, one because it just, it just, and everyone goes to the bathroom like 50 times and you're like, right, you're like, it's not a secret, I get it. You're like, they wink at each other and like, let's go. Just say like, hey, you want to come do some coke? Like, if I go out, I'm like, hey, I'm going to smoke a joint, anybody want to come? You can just say it out loud. Yeah. But like, the coke, they just have to like. And then they're like in the bathroom. Oh my God. You guys have made five trips to the bathroom this hour. We I, know you're not that incontinent. Yeah, and people are doing that at the stand, I feel like. A lot. I, and so I like to do this when I see people doing that stand. I'll go up to like, it's always like two, like a group of guys. And I'm just like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, nothing. I'm like, can I come? I was like, are you guys doing coke? And they're like, they're like, no. I'm like, can I come? Can I come? I was like, I want to watch. And they're like, Chloe, get away. No. And I'm like, I want to come. I want to come. They're like, bad Chloe. <laughs> it is fun to Every time I leave the stand, comics are just saying to me like, when they're just like, Take care of yourself, okay? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, are you behaving? I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, more or less. I don't know what. <laughs> but um, so I was gonna say is this was kind of like the beginning of it. I so I was at Marquis. I'd done a bunch of coke, and I I had a seizure. Well, and, what? Yeah, at, at Marquis. Yeah, so they wow. called like a, a an ambulance, and you know, I remember the next thing I know, I'm like being taken out by like two police one on either side and i'm like what and i'm like what am i doing like what are you guys doing because like when you have a seizure you have like amnesia you don't remember anything and i'm like you just had a seizure and i'm like no i didn't and then they're like why are you bleeding and i had like blood all down my dress because like that's a good question it's a good question question. on your seizure yeah because i like bit my tongue really bad and then uh, I remember getting into like on the gurney going in and I had my bag and I had so much drugs in it and I remember seeing one of my friends because like half of my high school was outside of the club at this point after this because we had come from a big like party and everyone went to Marquee after and I remember seeing one of my friends and like throwing her my bag when I'm by the cops being like take this because I didn't want to like whatever Yeah. and then whatever I went to the hospital and I was telling everyone there that I was, I was roofied and everyone's like believed me like you're roofied with cocaine i'm like you don't even understand people these days they want you awake for when they assault you they want you <laughs> you're roofied on cocaine wide yeah. awake but um so I that when you hear those things and you're like oh okay first you're because people don't think people are lying that's your normal stance like people are telling the truth so then it's like all right well let me make sense of the world based on this new information yeah i guess people are roofing each other on coke and you don't go like oh, that chick was lying and you're like oh mm. um here's the big story do you remember um right around that time um, Martin Lawrence okay. was caught running naked with a gun oh, in I love Beverly that. Hills or somewhere in LA. Do you remember the story? No, I wasn't even doing comedy then. Okay. I wasn't involved. Yeah, but he was a big fucking superstar. Yeah. It was Martin Lawrence at his height. And he, then he, it was, he was dehydrated. He had dehydration. And so I was like, oh, okay. And that was the story. Until we found my buddy's manager, um, he wasn't his manager yet, but he was my other buddy, Freddie Soto's manager at the time, was like telling us, was like uh, about publicists. And he was like, um, Everyone get one. 
What? Everyone get one. Yeah, but he was like, well, yeah, that's not the real story. Like, what do you mean? He was dehydrated. He goes, okay, well, let me just tell you what I do as a manager. I immediately, if there's a scandal like that, I'll call the publicist. Like, let's spin this. Yeah. He goes, Ari, have you ever been dehydrated? I was like, yeah. He goes, do you run a lot? <laughs> dehydrated? <laughs> have you ever taken off all your clothes or grabbed a gun or wanted to grab a gun? <laughs> Are those symptoms of dehydration? And I'm like, no, really the opposite. Yeah. yeah, it was crack or something. It's like people believe what they want to believe. It's the same way when when someone, um, you know, will say something about someone and be like, this person's a terrible person. Like they're, you know, they're a racist. They're this and that. People will believe it if they want to believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And then that stamp is like just on you. I feel like it's, it's like- kind of basically just like the first person to get to it and, and post the public opinion of it. People follow that. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Diet. Yeah, like you could like be helping a homeless guy up and like putting shoes on him. And it's like if the first thing is like, you think you're better than this guy of uh, forcing him to wear your shoes. Uh, and it's like, Oh, you want him to walk a day in your shoes yeah. because you won't be able to live a life in those shoes because you have a house. Yeah. And if that's the first story, they'll catch a lot of flack. There'll be people like, well, oh, come on. But like, it's already going to be a lot of flack. Yeah. But if the first story is look at this hero cop putting shoes on a, on a homeless guy, then mm-hmm. it's just like goes from there. <laughs> I don't know. Sam, so you had the seizure. You bit your tongue off. I didn't bite it off. <laughs> you bit it. Is that a normal thing? Having yeah, seizures yeah. on coke? Oh well, well, it gets. Well, so what happened was that, and then I went back to my school, and then I was like a lot feeling a lot of shame because all the parents would be like, "Stay away from Chloe," kind of like she's an addict, she's a cokehead, she's doing drugs, and so I just started to feel like really embarrassed. So that's when I really just started like, "All right, this is my identity," and I got kind of wrapped up in it. Your identity was to do drugs. I was just like, I'm a piece of shit. Oh, wow. Everyone thinks I'm a piece of shit. This is who I am now. So you believed him. And I was just young. I was like young. And when you're like that age, you're very impressionable. Yeah. So I just became like the like the bad girl, like whatever. And I just kind of like held on to it. I went to when I went to college, I was just like partying a ton. And then I had two more seizures. When did, I, did you were you fucking a lot? Having sex? Yeah. I was a virgin. What do you mean having, like, you don't know what I'm asking when I'm saying, were you fucking a lot? I was yeah. a virgin when I had that seizure. Wow. I was okay. a virgin when I was doing the cocaine then. Were dudes hitting on you? Oh, yeah. 16 year old at a fucking yeah. at a nightclub, you must be hit on. Yeah, for sure. What'd you do? Just be like, get beat it? Or. Yeah, I was. I would never go home with anyone. I, if I hooked up with someone, it'd be like, my, I had a boyfriend. Right, okay. But, um, oh, not then. I Then I got a boyfriend. Like, anyways, but then I, yeah, I didn't lose my virginity until I was a senior. In college? Oh, wow. That's pretty old. That is old considering what you're around. I was doing coke when I was 16. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is like the two like very advanced and very behind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm actually not very promiscuous. It's um, funny because I was like blacked out for 10 years and like I don't really, I don't never been raped, you know. Well, I don't really know. I guess it's between me and God, huh? Three way. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm saying like, you know. I don't know. But yeah, so then that happened. And then in college, that was what I was doing. I was just a huge partier. And uh, I started having more seizures. And everyone's like, oh, you're just a drug addict. And then that was when I was like, I should go to rehab. Then um, I didn't go. And then I was in New York. And then I started like getting on this really bad. Wait, this is after college? In college, I had a few more seizures. I got kicked out of college. Wait, th- did you go to the doctor? Like, what were the seizures? I was having those from Xanax because I got, like, really into Xanax. Oh. I would, like, sleep for days and eat, like, b- full bars of Xanax. And, and those would give you seizures? After, for, like, two days. And I, when I first got to college, I sold Coke. Yeah. Like, I remember the most I bought, <laughs> I bought, like, 97 grams of Coke once. And I, like, r- rented out, like, this, the top floor, like, the top penthouse room of this hotel at SMU. And I would sell. I was a freshman and I was selling to all, like, the seniors and stuff. You're Jewish or not? Mm-mm good at business yeah and um my dad's good at business so i'm good at business and so i um i uh so yeah and so i was just like this is my identity is i remember like i would bring my passport because we were in texas i bring my passport out with me at night because like me and my friend would be like in case we're gonna go for a run to mexico with our dealer but he never would take us but he got shot he died when we were sophomores so r.i.p And we'd go to his house and he'd let us cut the coke with him. And he'd be like, we're going to make flake. It's 4060. And whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What, what's that term? Flake is a type is a type of coke. It's like the way they cut it. So he'd make like 4060, 40% coke, 60%, whatever he'd cut it with. It was like really wild. Yeah. And, wow. That was fun, I think. 
When you buy Coke, are you aware of what, if it's a 4060 or a 5050? No, you have or, no idea what it no is. Idea. But that's because we were hanging out with the dealer. I remember I'd be like wearing like little dresses and my headband. And one time, oh, sorry. I went to this, me and this guy who I was friends with, we went to one of these. I remember we'd go to like these dealer's house in Dallas and I'd sit there and there'd be like a guy sleeping on the couch and there'd be like pit bulls and just like glocks on the table and i would just be like sitting there in like a little dress when we'd be picking up drugs and i remember one time i touched the gun i like this and one of them pulled a gun on me and i was like sorry <laughs> and I, was just, I was like my bad like, no touching and then i was like in uh, hindsight that's a good and then, like my guy friend was like she's cool she's cool she's cool i was like, like we disagree she's touching our guns <laughs> i was like i'm cool man and i remember i'd come from like a foot a day party at smu and i had no shoes on and i was wearing a sundress and i was like so drunk and i was Damn. like i was like i just need like a lot of coke <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so then i whatever and then i was like then i came to new york i started doing stand-up when i was like 25 and i was like i'm so funny but i was like obviously awful and then i got into this bad habit so my my schedule my drug schedule was this i would wake up at like whatever noon or something i would take adderall yeah then at like three o'clock i'd start drinking like beers because yeah. I'd be like, I have to write. or go. I would go to like an open mic in the basement of like Laughing Buddha or something. And they make yeah. you do like drink minimums there. Oh, I hated that. And you, and As like, a comic, they'd make yeah. you buy. And so I'd be like, start drinking. Cause Which I, was Laughing Buddha? Was that? It was at like Climate Lounge. Jeff Lawrence. Oh, yeah, right here. Laughing Buddha in the East Village. Mm -hmm. Oh, they had a mic there. Yeah. What is that place normally? Is that a nightclub? No, it's like a beer bar. I've never. I've always been by it, but they always seem like they have a bouncer outside. Yeah, like a guy in a suit. But it's funny because when I did Laughing Buddha, it was like the comics that when we started, it was like me and Usama mm -hmm. and like Blair Saki. Like that was like we're all there and the, like it's just oh, funny cool. to talk because we're like, remember Laughing Buddha? <laughs> so like I would do that, then I would start drinking like beers at like three, and then I would like do some shitty bar, sh like some weird show, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm so, I'm a genius, and uh, I was so bad, and um. I thought it was so funny, and um, but wasn't. And you were coked up then. I don't know what. No, I'd be like probably drunk. I stopped doing coke a little bit, cause and then and then I would start drinking hard alcohol, and then at like you know nine or oh yeah, and then like later I'd start doing coke, and then to go to bed I would take a Xanax. So I did that schedule for like a, probably a, damn. a year or two every day. Every day. Yeah, that was like my, my lifestyle. Wow. Oh, and then when I get home at night, I drink like two bottles of red wine because I was like, this is what adults do. And I was obsessed with watching The Godfather. So I'd yeah. watch Godfather 2 like almost every night. And just be like drinking red wine. Did anybody, I mean, so, I mean, I, I, I was walking around after Soder's, Dan Soder's uh, special taping. Okay. We were all walking to, um, to a party, a celebration party that he didn't want to be at. <laughs> he's like, I don't know, not an introvert, but like introverted somewhat. And he's like, I don't want to be at a party. It's all for me. They had a cake for him that with him as like a 49er. And I don't think he even saw it. He just kind of walked. But anyway, him and me and Nate and maybe somebody else were all walking from what's the matter? You're right. No, I had a bug on my face, oh, I think. From um, <laughs> no, I'm having a seizure. Uh, Bowery Ballroom to the, to the Village Underground, to the Fat okay. Black. And they just kept passing places where Nate and him had done like mics and barked and shit and they were just like super alcoholics at the time and they were just reminiscing about like super heavy like booze use oh my god it was it was so crazy also so but the, just casual about it, it was just like oh, everyone did it oh i remember it was crazy i remember like the other day actually i remember the other day like two days ago this girl who i went to high school with she called me and she was like hey like I was, i'm just starting to do stand up like can i get coffee right. with coffee with you and i was like sure and so she's like, I'm going to an open mic at Greenwich Village. Do you want to come? And I was like, sure. So I went with her and I did the mic. And when was this? like a week ago. Recently? Because this girl oh, I like, okay. went to high school with was like, whatever, I just started doing stand-up. Will you get coffee with me? So Yeah, sure. She's like, I'm going to a mic. You still do like, mics? Uh, sometimes. Okay. Like not yeah. not that often, but like I'll go. Yeah, I got to start going more. I'm not a, I'll, I'll do whatever. Yeah. And, um, They're a good so, way to work out brand new jokes. Yeah, so then- uh, at the mic, everyone was like such a pussy. Like people are like the material they're doing is so stupid, and like and like bad comedy needs to be bad comedy. Like the open mic comedy that's bad should be so bad, but their bad open mic comedy like 
was just so boring. I remember when I was doing the mics when I started, we would be worried that people would have a gun. These psychopaths. We'd be like, this guy's gonna kill someone. Like, oh, you mean the mic, the open the, micers? The open micers. Yeah. They were yeah. so hardcore, terrible. Yeah. Like psychotic. Psych- and, and you just have to be. There's all. There's like every third person is going to have a long career in stand up. Uh, then half the people are just like try it for a year, then get out, and then the other third. I mean, that's, that's one third, one third, and then the fast third is the gun psychos. Like, and, oh, you're gonna be. Committed. But there were none of those at this mic. Everyone like the. They were just trying to do like woke stuff. Fucking stupid and it, comedy got popular. It got. It was so boring, and I was just like, I remember the open mics being literally looking around like this guy's gonna. I remember this one guy came in, he's like, I went to my dad's office and I brought a fucking bomb, and he was like, I hate the man, <laughs> and we're all sitting there and we're like, this is not okay. <laughs> Dude, we had a guy. And our open mics, kind of not kind of as stranger, it's the unurban. Oh, and it was coffee shop. And this guy, he he always do this joke about <laughs> being a self hating gay. <laughs> he was like, "Ugh, I just I know I'm going to hell. Obviously, I thought I was suck a dick, and that's disgusting." And but he, like he li- literally hated himself for being gay. It was so raw and real. I'm like, damn. <laughs> there was this mic that my friend used to run that we used to go to, and there was this really old guy who would come and do the mic like. He was, oh yeah, the old people he too. Was so he would come every week, and he was so old, and he was so racist. <laughs> every week he was just beyond racist. He'd be like, "Slaves, bring them back," and like it was the most racist thing. And then one week he didn't come, and everyone was like, "Where is he?" And someone said, "He actually died." <laughs> What really? <laughs> he legitimately died. So they were like, oh. like we should have a service for him at the mic. So they're like, we should say a few <laughs> a few words. So the host like had like a little service at the mic and said a few words. They're like, we just want to say uh, thanks, racist Joe. Um, we're gonna miss you at the mic. <laughs> everyone was like, does someone want to go up and do one of his bits? Like, wow. <laughs> Does anyone want to say something about so it? So they don't have that kind of craziness at the no, mics anymore? No, it's just not a thing oh, anymore. Lame. That's where all the good shit came out of. I mean, because I used to sit at mics and laugh. Like, because yeah. it Someone was so out there. Yeah. And it's so fun to see, like, the comics that you started with and the ones who, are, like, are still in it. Emma was telling me about some open mic or same thing where, where it was like a guy who's not going to last, you know, just yeah. like crazy, like doing this for your fucking three friends that are there, some frat guy, and just saying the most racist <laughs> Recently? Stuff at, yeah. And she was like, <laughs> like a year ago. And, and it was just like, and she was like loving it. She was like, damn, dude, you're going for it. She's like, you know, I don't agree with any of this, but fuck, <laughs> balls on you. Good. I got to go to that mic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got to go to that one. Yeah. They taught Andre Agassi. They always say like they taught him how to hit hard first. He's a tennis player. Mm-hmm. Isaga. Then- what? Isaga. That's how I used to call him growing up. Oh, Agassi really? backwards. <laughs> Isaga. And then, but then they taught him how to aim. Yeah, I mean, and these open micers like just hit hard, hit fucking hard. He was smoking crack, that guy. That's right. Agassi's the man. Agassi's the man. It was you got. It was like you're two. You're two ways. You're either a Sampras fan or you're an Agassi fan. And I was straight up Isaga. You mean all my brothers? (laughs) Isaga. We go to like (laughs) you open Arnold Palmer for golf. It's like yeah, that guy's got drinks named after. Oh, dude, who is Phil Mickelson smoking cigs on the golf course? John Daly was the best. Is that the one who was doing it? Yeah, and he was having like he was having shakes, trying to like he's quitting alcohol. And he's having the shakes because withdrawals. Was he and just he killing it? Off the, he was like, couldn't hit a putt. They had to lead him off. Oh. Like, they're like, nah. but then one day he was like, had a press conference, and he was like, uh, uh, they're like, how's the training going? He's like, good, good. I'm drinking again. Everyone's like, <laughs> you got to slip it in casual. And he goes, no, it's okay. Like, he just little beers, and you see all the press core because they're like, y- y- dude, you're we're beyond terrible on alcohol. And he's like, no, I can handle it. And they were all like. They all want to say, you can't. <laughs> they, that's not their place. I would just be in the back. I'd be like, journey. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you do you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's on their own path. <laughs> um, God, I, that sounds like such a fun time. To be that, like, to go Xanax to sleep, Coke to even out it after alcohol. It wasn't. It was miserable. It's Why? no way to live. You are a shell of a person. Well, there's like in the moment and then there's overall. Yeah. You but I'm, I mean? I'm you know using all of those things because I absolutely hate myself. <laughs> right. You know, I'm miserable. Is that what they told you in rehab? No, I hadn't gone to rehab yet. So then I was watching the Kardashians. Uh-huh. And uh, in this episode, <laughs> yeah. I've been wanting to go to rehab since I since I was at SMU. I remember I'd like print out p- pamphlets, pamphlets of like um, Cirque Lodge and stuff. Like those bougie rehabs and like whatever. And I'd be like, 
like just like slip them to my parents and be like, how about it? You know, I'd be like the opposite of a tooth fairy, like putting them under their pillows. I'd wow. be like, I'll be like, let's go. I need some horse therapy. You wanted to go to rehab. Yeah, because it was like, I thought it was like cool. But you said yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but then but then uh, they're just like, no, like you just grow up, go like grow up, Chloe. Because you know, when you're young, you don't know. Like, yeah. And so then I saw the Kardashians and then Scott Disick went to this rehab in Connecticut called Mountainside and I was like, I could do that. Scott Disick is the one that knocked up that chick so he could stay on the show? Mm. Yeah, that what a baller move that was. So I went to it, and it was actually like my first rehab, and it was the only one I didn't get kicked out of, and I stayed there, and it was great. And then I was sober for like eight months after it. How, how, okay, so walk me through what rehab is. They're not forcing you because you wanted to go. No, I need. I needed to go. I yeah. was so miserable. I was getting blacked out every like single night. Like this I was, was into comedy or before comedy when I kind of started. Okay, and also at that point, blackout. Oh, oh, I was like getting, I would get blacked out. Like I was just really, really not okay. I was so upset. I would like, not about comedy. I was just like so sad. And I was 20, my parents had were getting divorced. And it's kind of strange when your parents, it's it's bizarre to um, have your parents get, it's, it's different to be a child of divorce, but being an adult of divorce is interesting because the roles switch. So when you're uh. a child of divorce, your parents are still forced to be the adults in the divorce. But when you're an adult of divorce, your parents can become the children of the divorce because they think you can handle it. You know what I mean? So they're going to you for like advice? Not advice. even. They're just like not hiding anything from you. They're just like, this is what's happening. They were done. We're breaking up. You've broken up before. You get it. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like, when you're damn. a child, it's everything's very sensitive and, and they're uh. keeping it. So it's like, it's interesting. Like they can just flip the roles. So I think it's, I, I think being an adult of divorce is harder than being a child of divorce. So I was super upset about that because I was, I loved being in my family. I was very proud of being in my family. And I, and then I was like, ah, like I was just whatever. Yeah. And so I went to that rehab. It was great. It was pretty funny. And Wait, I wanted to hear more about this rehab. I got that, that was my most boring one. No, no, but I want to hear about it. Should I try a cigarette? Yeah, man, do it. Yeah. Don't be a bitch. First, I was already going to do it. Uh, all right. Um, what was I just saying? Oh, I try to sound natural on stage because um, I was too contrived in the beginning. I was like, so I was at the store today. Did you ever notice? And it was like, my first girlfriend was like, that's funny, but you were funny in the dining But I'm hall. breaking up with you. <laughs> in the dining hall just when I was around my friends no from college you were that asshole no it was just like holding court in the dining hall <laughs> that guy <laughs> that guy's the worst that's, that's like every guy at an open mic right now I was super funny in the dining hall <laughs> I'm gonna be the next Dave Chappelle <laughs> so anyway oh I that trans bit I, that crushed in the dining hall at my nest hack my what Nescak. What's that? New England school. Cack. I can't remember the rest. Arts and science or something. No, I don't know. I cut that. It's embarrassing. I don't know. It's like all the. It's like a branch of all these like little liberal art schools in the East Coast. They call them Nescacks. Oh, you ever see how Chappelle smokes cigarettes? He smokes wrong. Like you smoke like that. He goes like this. That's how boys smoke. Oh, not like that. But boys smoke cigarettes like this. This how dude, this is how dudes smoke. Like that? He smokes like this. It's so weird. My mom, like, like where'd I, you learn how to do it? You obviously, fucking... my mom hates <laughs> that I smoke cigarettes. And I got to, like, a phase later and, like, now that I'm just, like, I don't care. Like, I'll just smoke in front of my parents. Yeah. Like, you know, we'll be at, like, a family thing. Like, after dinner, I'll just sit there. You shouldn't smoke. We shouldn't get divorced. And I'll just, that's what I said to my parents. I was like, you guys shouldn't get, they're like, we're getting divorced. I'm like, how are you guys, how, how, I was like, divorce is expensive. Like, how are we going to pay my rent? And they're like, why don't you get a fucking job? I was like, why don't you marry your fucking soulmate? So so we could we could have this settled. <laughs> so great to throw shit back in their face. But uh, that didn't work out. <clears throat> didn't get them back together. <laughs> Threats didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work with ex-boyfriends either. From, yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I don't want to do it. Oh, so here's what I was going to say. So when I started doing stand-up, I to try to like sound less contrived. It was the word I wanted to avoid at all costs. So I would like do crowd work a little bit for five minutes mm -hmm. out of my 15. And then if I started the bits after that, it would sound really bad to like go into like bit mode. Yeah, you'd feel like. Uh, yeah, so I'd have to like make it match. So like that shit when we were just when you didn't know we we're like on air, like that's the the that's the goal to get to just be natural shit. I did it. Yeah. Now I can die. Now you can like. Now I can die that. my alcoholic death and I'll get credibility. That's right. Um, okay, wait. So. Damn, damn. So wait, what was I gonna say? 
Oh, okay. So you walk through the doors. What's the, how do they meet you? So what happens is like basically when you first get to a, a rehab, um, you're usually like pretty unwell, and obviously, no one goes into rehab like I'm having a pretty good day. Let's right. bottom out again. Yeah. Um, so you get to rehab and you go to detox, and detox is the best part of rehab. It's so nice and Why? it's so fun. Oh my god! So you go to detox. Detox is like usually super nice. And it's like very comfy beds and they just load you up on pills, like on so many pills. To what, make you sleep? They give you like, if you're coming off alcohol, you're on tons of Ativan. And there's Ativan. like tons, you're just like on a cloud. What is Ativan? Ativan is the shit that like chalks up your system so you don't have like the shakes? Yeah, and it's kind of like, a, it's kind of like an anti-anxiety. Okay. So you get on a bunch of Ativan so you don't have seizure. Okay. Or like alcohol tremors. It and just stuff. knocks you out too, or no? You're just kind of like woo, killing it, chilling. And then like if you're coming off of heroin, like people are detoxing, and it's just like detox is hilarious because everyone's just out of their mind in it. And you're like detox crew. That's who you end up being the closest with in rehab. They're like your open mic crew from the beginning days. And pff, I remember like in detox at the first rehab, like we're there and like they're giving, they're teaching us like we're doing like yoga, but we're all in like Ativan and we're just like in bathrobes. Like there was this one smoking area and only <laughs> you're only allowed to have one person out there at a time. <laughs> this one guy went out there, smoked a cigarette, and he said he was reading a book, but he passed out and the book was upside down the whole time. And we're like banging on the door so people can go smoke cigarettes. Everyone's like, he's like, I'm reading. We're like, the book is upside down. <laughs> like, you're clearly not. He's like, I'm Jewish. You read the other way. <laughs> it's not, you know, backwards, not upside down. You don't read from the bottom up. You read from the right to the left. Listen, my, in my last relationship, things were backwards. The guy ate my butt before my vagina. And what? Yeah, I was like, this is off. Wow. What a move. You went straight to beating your butt. That, I mean... I told him I wouldn't talk about him in comedy, but that didn't say his name, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, sure. That is comedy. That is nuts. I figured it out. It's because he's dyslexic. Shut up. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, but it's actually true. He is dyslexic? Yes, yeah, so that's why. For, I mean... That's why. What's the feeling you have? If you're a woman and you're like, it's going to... And it's like, wait, you're passing by the... me, what's the feeling? Post. Red flag. Red flag. Probably, no. I don't know. I'd be like, damn, this guy is into making me happy. I got him to like tie me up because I was like, this is a good trick. What do you mean? I can't. Trick. I, I can't leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's certain things someone will do uh, sexually in a relationship that'll make you think twice before breaking up with him. You know, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do I want to get rid of it? Like, l l be smart here. Like, uh, don't be r rash. Some chick I was dating would, every time she left in the morning to go to work, she would blow me and then leave. Like that was the last move. She gave me a blowjob to completion, and then back. I'm just and then go. And do you man, think you would like her more if it wasn't to completion and she just left? No, that would have driven me crazy. <laughs> just like uh, get me. I'm like I'm almost there. I'm like yeah. Enjoy Gaslighting. That. She's come lighting you. Yeah. But I was like I couldn't break up with her. It was like it took me a lot longer. Blue lighting you. Blue lighting. Blue balling. But blue lighting like yeah. gaslighting. I like it. They're yeah. giving you positive things. Like no, I always said I loved you. <laughs> it's like what. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. I always loved you. Yeah. I cheated on you a lot. Like, no, I've been around you. You, you couldn't have. No, I did. <laughs> like, no, I did. No, you didn't. no, you're with me all the time. What's We got to have a line between gaslighting and just normal lying. I feel like white chicks have invented all these rules to get us away from just oh, mistreating God, you in any give way. Give me a break. And it's like, we're allowed to lie. Yeah. I got caught fucking we're allowed fucking to, a girl I know. with a cigar in the Oval Office. Guys, I'm actually going to admit that. Guys are allowed to not like you, okay? But, yeah. like, I am, I feel like I'm quite entitled that when a guy doesn't like me, I'm like, I think, like, I remember this guy was like, I don't like you. And I was like, you have a lying problem. Because you do, he does you like do you. You do like me. He's like, I don't like you. I'm like, you're a pathological liar. You're in love with me. Why can't you accept this? I have, tr I have trouble, like, letting go. I also, since I have, like, I am, like, shameless, like, in terms of, like, I'll text a dude whatever I want. I need to work on boundaries. And, like, I don't really care. I'll just, like, fire him off, you know? <clears throat> and um, I should work on that. But I think the reason why is because, like, I don't have, like, any sort of, like, fear instilled with me when it comes to men because I have five brothers. Yeah. So I'm just, like, oh, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to, like, I'll just say what I want. Yeah. Eating ass before a pussy. That's such a fucking bull. I've never heard of that. Now I miss him. I heard of one guy who took shrooms before he smoked weed. One guy. 
One of my friends tried coke before she smoked weed. That's crazy. <laughs> but you can't be like gateway drug. I they're going to go coke is a gateway drug to weed. Um, wait, okay. So they walk through the door. You're in this fun you go to, it, detox you go, place. Yeah, it, it's all right. You Lithium go to, or no? That's anti-psychotic? Yeah. Okay. So you go to your detox, whatever, you're chilling. You go there for like four days, whatever, how much you need. Then you go into the regular part of the rehab. Yeah. And in the regular part, you know, you do your day-to-day, which is like you have to wake up, you go to breakfast, um, and then you've groups all day, like group therapy. Then you have one-on-one therapy. <clears throat> then depending like where the rehab is, like I went to my first one was in Connecticut. And so like there were like outdoors wood course, like courses we would do, like obstacle courses in the trees and stuff. And they made us go camping one night. This is the first one? No. Yeah. And there, oh, every morning at seven, you have to go to meditation there was sitting meditation or reading meditation. Reading was in a chapel. Sitting was like you go in this room and they're lighting incense and you do like a 30 minute meditation. Then you go to breakfast and you get like a little bit of chill time. And then, yeah, then you just have groups all day. And then you do like your outdoor activities. There's like a Zen garden. You have to do all this shit. You do, then they, they, What's the activities? Like sweeping like fallen leaves and stuff? <clears throat> no, like you go on the ropes courses and stuff. And what does that do? Does just keep you occupied? Build team building and trust. Like, we're doing trust falls. And you ever has to catch you? Yeah, just learn to trust people. Wow. We're, I remember me and my friends joking about, like, when we get out of rehab, we're like, we're going to take it easy when we get back into using. We know, we're like, yeah, last night was a when good- When we get back into using. Yeah, we'd be like, last night was a good night. Like, I had, like, one bong hit, did four trust falls, seven beers. <laughs> you know, you got to use what you learned. <laughs> um, trust falls would be a good thing at a fucking using party. They should use it. They're probably doing those at open mics right now, trust falls. What? They're such fucking pussies. It's because yeah. people now get into this for, for fame and success instead of just to escape normal life. It, it really changed stand-up. Mm-hmm. Anyway, whatever. Um, okay, so for how much does this cost, this place? Uh, I don't know. You don't have any idea? I think like insurance covered part of it, and yeah. then the rest is like, rehab's expensive. Rehab is expensive, yeah. It's very expensive. I just try to get somebody into a sort of a stress rehab, and we were looking at the at the ones, you know, and there's, what's the one in Malibu? Which one? Mm-hmm. Promises? Promises. Or not the one on the commercials. The other one. Promises. Promises. Is, I went there. I got kicked out. Okay. That was well, my, we'll get into that. That but, was, uh, no, I was going to say that was my last one, but then I went to like three after that. How, fuck, okay, shit, I got to keep this in some sort of form. Sorry. That, why, okay, well, why'd you, I have it. Some woman. Kicked out of promises. Um, but anyway, we're trying to get, uh, how, uh, I'm trying, I'm writing notes. If you're listening, I'm writing notes to get back to this. Oops, that's a question, not a, not a clip. Um, Oh, we tried to get her into promises, and we looked at the price tag, and it's like, oh, we can't. We'll have to do a fundraiser. Like, like we can't afford this. It, it's crazy. It's like 60, 70, 66. What? <clears throat> thousand. Per, per? For the stay. For the whole stay. It was the monthly fees were just like, yeah. oh, yeah, this is more than any of us are making. I threatened them when I went there. They were like, they pulled me, I went in, and I like, threatened them. They are like, because I was at promises in West L.A. first, and I, when I was in the, that's like the younger, shittier one in West LA. Yeah. And I found like a, a dope ball in my drawer next yeah. to my bed. A dope ball is like, so when someone does heroin, they take like the excess from the syringe and you put it on like a cotton ball and it soaks up dope, like the heroin. So like these brown cotton balls. And I found one in my room. And so I said to them, I was like, I want to get transferred to Malibu. I'm, I'm not doing this place. There's a dope ball in my room. I'm not fucking doing this. Like I'm There should not be a dope ball in your room. And if you're trying to clean up, that that's that's a fair request. Yeah, so then <clears throat> they were transferring me. I and want I, to do the beach one. Yeah, so then I got transferred to that one, and I was like, they're like, okay, we'll transfer you to the Malibu one. And I was like, okay, like before I go, like I'm just going to need like two days to like think. And we're like in LA, they're like, what? Because I had planned, I was like, I'm going to go check in to like... Um, a hotel. I'm gonna, I was like, uh, my plan. I was gonna go check into the Sunset Tower for two days and just to relax, clear my head. <laughs> and they're like, absolutely fucking not. If you want to come to the Malibu one, you are coming with us right now. I'm in like a pink pajama set. Yeah, we're not letting you go. Fucking- I'm still on all my Ativan because I just got there, and they like, pick me up in an Escalade and transfer me to the new one. Nice. And then I like show up at the new one in Malibu, and everyone's like, "Who's the new girl?" And I'm like, roll out of the Escalade. I'm just like, I need a fucking cigarette. And like, someone gives me a cigarette. And I'm just like sitting there, like in in like admissions next to like a bocce ball court in a pool. 
and they're like just talking to me, like all like pilled out. Damn. It was nuts. Wait, why'd you get kicked out? Of that one? Yeah. That one was a fucking trip. So that one Don't was. Worry, we'll get back to the day to day of of a rehab, but first. <clears> that one was um. So I I started like my roommate at that one was hilarious. I should write a book about all this. Boys and girls separated, right? No, together. Oh no no no! We were again like, the same house. There was three different houses. There was a koi house because koi house was near a koi pond. Then there was the pool house. I was in the pool house because it was next to the big pool. Then there was like this other house called like hedge house, which was like a little pool surrounded by hedges. And so I was in like the big house, the pool house, which was like co-ed. So like my roommate was a girl, but there's boys still in the house. Okay. And there's just like a big pool and us. And I remember all all the boys and stuff. We'd order on Amazon dry ice and we'd throw it in the pool. A little bubble. And like make it and like just blast Smoke. like techno. <laughs> it sounds fun. Yeah, it was. And so it sounds like sleepaway camp. It, that's why I called whenever I'd go to rehab. I'd be like, gotta go to big girl sleepaway camp. But um, so I uh, so this there's this guy, and I like immediately was like obsessed with him, and I was like, I love this guy, and he had a um, uh, he I thought he was so cool because uh, he had a T Rex claw and a Picasso. He had a what? A T Rex claw and a Picasso. Picasso part I understand, Picasso painting. And he also bought a T-Rex claw. Like a fossil? Yes. It's a cool thing to have. He didn't have it with him, but he had it. And he had told me one time he took a monkey home from the Playboy Mansion, and he was like walking the monkey down the streets in Santa Monica, and he's all fucked up. He's like, you don't understand how hard it is to do drugs when you have a fucking monkey in your house. They are destroying everything. He's like, the monkey was ripping pages out of like his books, and he said the monkey would go up to light bulbs and just go like this and shatter them, <laughs> like throwing pots. At- he's like, never take a monkey home. They're annoying. <laughs> My advice is. But I remember being like, I love this guy. He's perfect. And I had like the biggest crush on him. And he was like my rehab boyfriend. And so I guess this guy and someone else, their dealer, because we're allowed to have our cell phones at this rehab because it's like- You are allowed? Yeah, because it's an executive one. Because they think we are like, because like a lot of like kind of like celebrities and executives go to this one. And they're so, like, yeah, I can't take off work. I'll go to rehab. Yeah. But I and I was shit. like, I have to repair, prepare for my open mics. And, um, and so uh, <clears throat> we had our phones and this guy, uh, one of the guys are- uh, his dealer wouldn't stop calling him. His dealer was this guy named Baby Dog or something. who's was also a rapper, and uh, he was like, "You like since you haven't been like buying drugs, like my kids can't go to sleep. Boy, I can't pay for my kids' camp. Like you're ruining my life." Like the dealer. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So the dealer's like, then he's, we're like, all right, let's just get drugs. So yeah, uh, you get the dealer, and he <laughs> throws a bunch of drugs over the hedge at the rehab and it's like ton of Xanax, ton of Coke, ton of whatever. And um Oh, this is bad news. And so then like everyone at the rehab is getting fucked up. Oh my god. And it's going on for days. Wow. And like what? It was wild. I remember we like we hooked up in the like, shower. We just we'd just be like up there people would be down there and we'd just be like up at the big house, like on the patio, just like ripping lines. Uh, not worried like, at all about the wardens? <laughs> not really. What do you mean people hooking up in the shower? Like me and this boy, we were like dating. He's like my rehab boyfriend. You'd fuck in rehab? We'd like yeah, we I don't call it that. And then I remember make so love? at night they have like check ins and um I should call it like make problems for myself, but uh, that's stupid. And um, they would have check in, so they'd like check if you were in your room and then whatever. So then obviously I'd sneak out because he lived in a different house. So I'd sneak out and then go to his room, and then people would go check in. I remember I'd fall like in the side of the bed, and then they'd be like, "Chloe's missing again." But it was just like on this big property. But um, so he ended up getting in trouble and like getting kicked out. And this was one of my favorite memories of it. So we're all in like the downstairs main common room area and he is, this guy is getting in trouble and he's like really fucked up and they're like, you have to go, uh, like blah, blah, blah. He's like, Chloe, come sit next to me. Come sit next to me. And I was like, no. And he like gets up and he looks at me and he goes, beginning to lose interest. And then like passes back out and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I want to move. So he gets transferred to a, a different rehab in Malibu. I'm on probation. For the drugs. Yeah. For taking drugs into a rehab. Yeah. I mean, if I'm not your friend and, and it's like I'm trying to clean up, let's say I'm trying to clean up and I'm not part of your crew and all of a sudden it's like, wait, there's hella drugs here? Oh, give me some. I know. I'm not going to fucking get clean like I wanted. 
Yeah. And so like, he goes to his new one and then I'm like devastated because like, oh, this is the love of my life. He's gone. Yeah. And so he gets kicked out and then I'm on probation. I have like a strike or something. And then I'm, I'm, I got all my off campus privileges taken away. Yeah. So I'm not allowed to like go to outdoor meetings, the outside. So they have a meeting where they take everyone from promises and they go to like an alumni meeting. And I'm not allowed to go to it. So, but then I like make this whole scene like, if you don't let me go, like I need this for my recovery. Like I'm really, really serious now about getting better. Like, please, like I just really need to be there. And they're like, okay, you can come. You're gonna be have two sober companions watching you. We, you don't won't get your cell phone, but you can go. And I was you won't like, get your cell phone, but you can go. Okay. So I'm like, fine. Okay, thank you. Like I just need this for myself. And so I go, go outside to smoke a cigarette. When I look. I see no one's watching I run and we're in they take us into like LA proper and I just run from the people and I have no phone no wallet anything I go into I run I go to Ralph's and like they sell liquor there you know yeah the, and I yeah. steal a bottle of vodka uh -huh. and then I like go to some skate park I, I like drink the whole thing I show up back at the meeting and it's like 150 people and I go into the meeting and I start yelling and I'm like fuck everyone here you don't even know what it's like to to be trying to get sober I have one day and there's no, my boyfriend's gone I make this like whole fucking scene I'm out of my mind shit face they call an ambulance they had to take me to wow they had to take I go to the hospital at uh UCLA and so I'm at the hospital whatever I have to enjoy it so I'm there the next morning I wake up it's like 7 a.m <clears throat> it's like a Thursday I'm in my like hospital gown I was like so chic at the time. I had like just makeup down my face and like a choker and like I just had like a plastic bag of just like a pack of cigarettes. And I was like, uh, and like a pair of like jorts and like a crop top. And I'm like, I'm fucking wearing this gown. It's just so chic. And I was like, had like dirty vans on. And I was like, I'm so LA and so cool. And I, when you leave the hospital, nobody at Promise is answering and I have no money, no phone, nothing. And if you go across the street from the UCLA ER, there are the UCLA fraternity houses. Yeah, okay. It's like 7 a.m. in the morning, and I'm like, I, before I go there, I'm like, that'll be a final resort. Great place to find. Final final need. resort. So I try to like go to a few, I see a few restaurants, bars, nothing's open at 7 a.m. I'm trying to like break in through back doors because I'm like, I need a fucking drink. And, uh, and I can't figure anything out. And so I just walk up to one of the frat houses, and uh, since I went to school in Texas, I know like, you say like, for the SAEs, it's like, like their secret code is like you fly alpha or something so i knock on the sae house and i'm like fly alpha. and the guy opens the door and he's like okay got a letter in how old are you uh, i was like 27 oh what a fucking was, treat for I a fucking too, frat i was too old. a cute chick going up to a frat house and be like i know the secret code you have to let me in. And i'm like, also like wearing like a, like a hospital gown with jorts and i'm like have makeup and i was so hot at this point wow that's probably my hottest and um <laughs> and i'm like hi because <laughs> my voice is like sorry and i go in and i'm like and I, I, I he lets me in i was like i need a drink and it's like 7 30 in the morning and he's like studying for like a test <clears throat> like on Adderall <clears throat> he's like you want some Adderall I was like no I just need something to drink and he's like we only have beers <clears throat> we had a huge party last night like jungle party was last night we used all the hard alcohol because there were like tons of hot girls and he's like I'm not saying you're not hot like I would totally like hook up with I mean I would totally give you a drink like I think you're hot like totally but like we just don't have any and I was like just give me a beer okay and he like gives me a beer and we're just like sitting there and I'm just like drinking beers with him on the couch He's like studying for his test, and then he what looks at me. What a great life hack to know if you have the secret code to a frat, you could just go get dr drinks. Yeah, and the guy's like, he's like, he says to me, You're honor bound. And I was like, this is pretty lame. You don't have hard alcohol here. And then he looks at me at one point, and he was like, I won't judge you if you don't judge me. I was like, yeah, all good, dude. And so, so I got no way to, and so I have a few more, uh, I have a few more, you know, I like to call them BL smoothies, yeah. a few more smoothies, Bud Lights. And, uh, then um, the guy, I get the kid, he calls me an Uber back to Malibu. So I take an Uber and I go back to Malibu. And then they send me to another rehab. They get me on a plane. And they're I like, you're out. Yeah, because they're like, you can't stay here. Because you're fucking up everybody. Yeah, it was like my second how strike. Many, how many times? It happens all the time. Yeah, that they've had a drunk person in an AA meeting at a rehab. We're like, Pro what? Well, the best part was I had a, my roommate was this girl who's, you know, looking back on it, one of my favorite funniest people because she had one of those um, ankle bracelets, like a house arrest oh, bracelet. Oh, nice. That's and a we, real fuck up. And we would like sit in the pool and like 
chain smoke and she'd have her like brace up and on a wrap and be just like chain smoking. She's like, tonight I think I'm gonna dress like Courtney Love. You vibing? And I'd be like, so in. <laughs> so I like. And um and she was there and she was there because and she was she was like doing heroin or something and so she um she was like, yeah, you know, I uh, I was a child star and it totally fucked me up. I was like, what were you in? She was like, I had a speaking role in Santa Claus Three. Um, fucked a child star. me up. You're a child <laughs> speaking actor. role, but a speaking role in Santa Claus Three. That's she's hilarious. amazing. I love her. Um, I don't know. What That's she's like I'm doing. a porn star. Like you've done three porns. You're not a, star, you're not a porn star. Yeah, but elevated you yourself. have Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, it's like you did a Chuck E. Cheese fucking uh, modeling shoot. You're not a supermodel. So yeah, that was a fun one. But I still like the other guy. Like we talk all the time. Was there any uh, lesbo shit happening? If if they like girl girl um, roommates? Not at this one. At a different place I went. Like they, all the girls just turned lesbians at this wow. like sober house I was in in Connecticut. I got kicked that out. Damn. But uh, yeah, that was promises. Was my is just the the whole going well, to that frat house and again. That's, that sounds awesome. I know. I was kind of. I know it sounds. Uh, you're I, saying it's bad, but I gotta man. say I'm a legend, huh? Yeah. I'm fucking kill it. A 27 year old. It's a little too old. Attractive though. woman showing up at a frat house, which is really 18 to 24. And the so guy was like, like well older. Yeah, like, like what? That's a movie thing. And I'm just like, I'm just like, I need a fucking drink. And they're like, we came to the right place. And we, the guy was like, okay. And he's like, where are you coming from? I'm like. Promises Malibu, and he was like, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, <laughs> like I was like, can I smoke in here? And I'm like smoking. And I'm like, don't do drugs. It'll fuck you up. And I was like, you guys follow me on Instagram. <laughs> like, I was just like so nuts. Jesus, Christ. I was out of my fucking mind at that yeah. point. So yeah. And then after that whole thing, I was really like really unwell. I got then I went. I had to go to this other rehab in Connecticut. And I remember it had a helipad at it, like the sober house. Rich, and I, rich one. And I took, uh, I got this like girl who's a heroin addict to take all these nudes of me on the helipad, where I'm just like standing with my back and I have like a little scarf on and like sneakers. I'm like sending it to like that guy because he like left the other rehab and he was obviously just like chilling in LA. Yeah, and he was like, Chloe, I'll get you a plane. He's like, get a plane ticket, come to Chateau Marmont. I got three Playboy bunnies. I got a ton of GHB. We're gonna do whatever you want. So I was like, done. So I run away from that rehab in like rural Connecticut. Yeah. I just like, I get on the, I just get a backpack of some stuff and I run away from there. And um, I'm like trying to get to the airport and there's like some sort of tropical storm. So all the flights are delayed. I can't get on a plane to LA. So I just checked into a hotel. And did what? And I just got like so out of my mind, blacked out. And then I ended up like getting into such a dark place that I called the rehab and I was like, I need help. Like I need someone to come get me. Like I'm not okay. Oh. And so see, what made you think that? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean like, uh, yeah, but it could have been a week before. I mean, it was just like I went there and then I drank for like three days. Oh, one of I drank for like you know two days. I, like I missed every flight and I was at this hotel alone, just drinking. <clears throat> and I was just like, I actually just need help. And so I called back the rehab. I was like. Cause they didn't know where I was because I ran away. <clears throat> yeah. The one in Connecticut, and they're like, "Okay, someone's coming to get you." And I was so out of my mind, like I'd so fucked up that that was when I had to go to a, <clears throat> I had to go to a psych ward, and I had to go there, and then from there I had to go to the hospital rehab, and that was just like not nice. It was like all homeless people and me. Damn. So that was that one. But I got a lot, of, yeah. So that was a journey. It's a lot of information. <laughs> So, like, the before you call, before you make that call, saying, I need help. See, like, there's wh- some wh- funny wh- parts, but it's all quite sad. I mean, well, that's your job, is to make funny out of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Miss Pat has this a fucking great bit about getting raped by her uncle. Oh, boy, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But she doesn't wallow in any of the She was like, he's it. a good uncle. You know, that's she, uncles, that's their thing. She, I mean, yeah, she said his dick smelled like fried chicken or something. Oh, my I, God. I it's just funny, and you barely even recognize that she got raped. It was just like, she passes over that part. She's great. But, like, um... But I'm saying, like, what when you woke up in the morning, before you call, like, what's what, what's your day like up until that point? Like, why is it that day? So it's like basically like I could only handle like I'm I couldn't I couldn't handle more of like just the drinking for I was just so sad and then the guy stopped answering because he was just on a bender and I was just like, what am I doing? And I was just like. I think my credit card got shut off 
because I had run away and I was just like, I don't, I'm fucked. And so I, um, <clears throat> I was just like, I don't know what to do. And at this point, like I knew I needed help. Like I put myself into rehab for the first time. And then I got through a phase where every time something bad would happen or I'd feel bad, I would run away and go to rehab because it was like the only place I felt safe. So I would get like homesick for rehab. I was like, okay, these people love me. These people take care of me. I'll go here. Yeah. So I started doing that. And then I was just like, at that point, I was just like so strung out, I was so tired because I'd been on this like long, crazy thing that I was just like, I can't, can't do it anymore. Damn. But then when I was at the hospital rehab, someone brought GHB in. The roofie drug. Yeah. People don't stop. Damn. Did you ever see um, The Wire? Kinda. So there's a there's a prequel to The Wire. What is it? The Corner. Okay. It's a six or eight part HBO series. Okay. Done and done. A couple of the actors were other parts in mm -hmm. The Corner. That, and then, but then when they do the wire, like we'll hire you again as an actor, but you'll be a teacher now instead of a yeah. drug, whatever. But this part, Bub, Bubba, Bubbles, whatever his name is, um, he ODs. Oh my God. Doesn't die, but wakes him in the hospital. Heroin, I think. And um, all his hair, and the doctor's are like, that's it. I mean, your heart can't take anymore. That's yeah. like, you really should borderline die, died. So, like, we got you back, but like, you'll die. I mean, there's no question. It's not like in the future. Like, if you don't quit smoking, you're going to get cancer. They're like, you will die. Yeah. It was one of those. And then his, his, you know, heroin friends show up and they're like, start unrolling some heroin. And then one of his friends, like, who's trying to quit, is like, what are you doing? The doctor just said, like, your heart will just stop. Yeah. And he's just like, dude, I'm on the ride. I don't like, care. It's, yeah. It's, I'm not able to stop. Yeah, yeah it seems definitely. so real. It is. Was it like that? Where well, you're like, when you're, when I you're in stop, it, but I can't. Yeah, when you're in it, you're in it. You don't think there's any other way. It's like tunnel vision. Yeah. There's no other way. Damn. It's, it sucks. It's such a shitty. It's like you feel like such a prisoner. Damn. But um, yeah. Then I had some more seizures, and then eventually the doctors were like, I did all these tests, and they're like, you're epileptic. That's why you had the seizures. Yeah, well, it was definitely like, and all those drugs and stuff would like trigger it and make it worse. But like, I, it turns out like I had epilepsy this whole time, and I was just un, didn't have it diagnosed. So, uh, yeah. Was fentanyl at all um, a thing then? No. Uh, actually, in college, people were like doing fentanyl patches. Straight fentanyl. Yeah. What is it? Slow time release. I don't know. You do like a lot. Yeah, I guess because it would be like a lollipop. People would ta steal from people on cancer, or like patches. A lo what do you mean a lollipop? There's like fentanyl lollipops. So you that, slowly suck it? Yeah. What is it? It's a downer, right? It's like a, it's like the strongest um, painkiller. It's like stronger than morphine and stuff. Well, uh, here's what I don't get. When they're putting it in Coke. They put it, yeah. It's like, th it does has the opposite effect of Coke. I guess they're cutting it with that and like it's like a speed ball. So when you do a speed ball, it can stop your heart because it's an upper and a downer. Or I don't really know. The four loco of drugs. So... Yeah, but what's the benefit of cutting it with that? Like, it's, you're, cheap. So you're, it's cheaper, maybe. But it's like okay, if it gave you the same sort of feeling as as coke, like if it was like an upper, but like you only need a small amount, then I get it's cheaper. Just to put you know one part fentanyl and then two parts coke, and then we're like all right, we're good, and then uh, seven parts everything hey, else. Hey, aren't dealers allowed to have a bad day? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm just like wondering like why they would put it in there. Like I have, they're I, not gonna get any repeat business that way. It's it, it, it I have you'll no try idea. some coke and you're like, Oh, this is putting me down. Like No, oh. you wouldn't you wouldn't notice it. You would not notice no, it. No, because Coke is cut with all weird things. Yeah. <clears throat> the amount of hands your cocaine goes through before you get it, because you have to realize it comes from some well, somewhere like Colombia, Mexico, and the amount of hands it goes through, and every time it goes through a different set of hands, they cut it down even more. Whoa. So Damn. <clears throat> Remember in the beginning of um the pandemic and you would go get hand sanitizer and it would be opened already like the and you're like you're you're watering this down like they're like so yeah funny. it's hard to come by and we're fucking we're charging 14 bucks per bottle it was that was crazy Those that we lived in that they fucking suck during that and it was like, Deal's a deal they made so much bank and they're like what are you doing they're like we're not so, making any money somebody get a bat yeah. <laughs> let's eat let's bite that off a bat yeah exactly I mean, let's get yeah. we need to start business up again make some soup that's right. I, and you would say, like, dude, the, the label says two ninety nine. You're selling this fourteen bucks, and they go, then don't buy it. I'll sell it. It's tulip. Today. It's like tulip it, dome. Within an hour, I'll sell it. Tulip like, dome, you know. What's tulip dome? Oh my god, it was the tulip mania in like the sixteen hundreds uh, in 
<clears throat> like Deutschland. It yeah. was like all this, uh, everyone was getting obsessed with tulip bulbs and buying tulips because all the royals wanted them. And so the market, it was like the first um, bubble. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I learned that on Coke. A lot of history. That's a good Coke moment. That's like a good- I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And so then it, the price of tulips went So right, everyone, right? everything goes up and then it bursts. And it bursts. People are like, oh, actually, I don't want Coke. And like, but I have and all then this, everyone's I have like, all these extra- ah, I'll just get COVID. Yeah, I've been growing. Yeah, exactly. At some point, you're like- I can't leave my house decisions. anyway. It's like, I have four- this much money I'm I'm in hopefully they were cutting it with straight alcohol instead of just with like water <laughs> it was life saving they're time. cutting it and with fentanyl like, I need this yeah <laughs> fentanyl and the whatever did the wardens Ooh, do this anything? hand sanitizer is making me sleepy <laughs> <laughs> my hands are asleep you're just like you sanitize your hands and you're walking around and you're like trying to drink something <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is this it's like oh you got that fentanyl sanitizer <laughs> oh we got that fetty hands oh let me have some of that <laughs> Oh, I was like, what do I have? Um, do the wardens ever abuse anybody? Wardens. Or what were they called? Oh, I don't know. Staff? Game, gamekeeper? Staff. <laughs> staff. Did the staff ever do any abuse? Uh, like hitting you? Sure. I don't know. Or, I think people probably hook up with them. Oh, yeah. There's a, uh, they had a security guard in Melbourne or Sydney, I forget. Um, I think Melbourne. And so they were doing uh, COVID lock-ins. You had to, when you land, you go straight to a COVID hotel. Oh my god! On your dime, and you have to stay there for two weeks. What? Yeah, in your Did room. Did you do that? What? Did you do that? No, I wasn't going to Australia. They were also limiting who could even go to Australia, so you had to like, true, true, true. yeah, it had to be an, uh, need to be extra repatriated, or you needed to like have some weird, weird business thing you have to go there for, you know, uh, fiance, something like that. It's cold out here now, but anyway, they're sticking you in a hotel room. Yeah, like, we'll bring you room service. All this you're paying, so you're paying a, a few thousand bucks to stay there Whoa. for a couple couple weeks and it's just in your room it's not it's like down under it's yeah. but, but before vagina territory he had a security guard and he fucked one of the people oh my god um consensually and then went back to his wife got covid from that went back to his wife spread it then it starts spreading through the town and then they had a, another big fucking lockdown because the security guard they had it like under control and the security guard like opened it up again mm, like 28 days that. later too whatever it was 28 weeks later 28 days later yeah. Um, so, did they do anything? Yeah. Did there was hookups? I'm sure. I didn't. I don't. Know. I guess some people probably liked the staff. Probably what? Liked the. Some, some people people. probably liked the staff. Just not under your chin. In front is fine. <laughs> Anywhere in front is fine. Yeah. Uh, whenever I do a podcast, people are always like, "Don't you do stand up? How do you not know how to hold a mic?" <laughs> it's because you can hear yourself through the monitors. If it's dropping, like that's not loud enough, and then it back to is. Um, interesting. And so now you're sober again, but you've struggled with it since then. Yeah, the pandemic was hard. Pandemic was hard. You, well, it you was, relapsed? Yeah, it was a good excuse because like I had no responsibilities. Yeah, right, right. Some people are like, I'm going to use this to better myself. I'm like, I'm going to lean the fuck in. My therapist was like, I'm worried about a lot of my patients, but you, <laughs> you've been preparing this for years. Yeah. She was like, I was like, because I talk about it, I'm like, wow, everybody's an alcoholic. Everybody's depressed. I'm like, welcome to the party. <laughs> I've been at the same one for like ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, I can guide you through this. I'm like, I'm going to just get a beer, start drinking yeah. again. You and the germaphobes were like, oh, you need my information now. <laughs> They're both like, I'll show you how to wash your hands. And you're like, I'll show you how to yeah, yeah, get yeah. blasted on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So like. Are you triggered now being around like clubs? No, because I'm I like if I have, I've tried to do, if I try to do like stand up or something when I'm drinking, I'll just do terrible. So if anything, like that's not a place I would want to drink. Yeah. But like whenever I've relapsed on any cigarettes, let's say, um, I know in my heart, hey, this is bad. I'm going to wake up. Uh, Can't believe I got shit. you to relapse on this episode. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then halfway <laughs> through it, I was like, what a fucking idiot. What am I doing? Oh, you were like a smoker and you quit? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I won't, but I will. It will force me to have a cigar later. Uh -oh. I'll, I'll, I, by tomorrow, the nicotine will already do its job. Wow, I'm and sorry. It, no, it's okay. It wasn't you at all. Um, <laughs> but, like, you know, in your heart, in your head, like, this is a bad idea, but in your heart, you see everybody drinking, or you see everybody smoking. Like, I just want one. And you just don't yeah. think about it for a second. Well, what's interesting is, like, when you are drinking, you think all these people are drinking a lot more than they are. And then when you get sober, you realize, like, wow, nobody's really drinking. Like, I'll go to a show and stuff. Like, I was at Frantic on Monday, and I didn't see anyone drinking. Why? Because also, you do notice the people that are drinking, but it's not all of them. No, it's, it's like it's one person, and it's kind of, of like, embarrassing. Of, right, and it's each. Exactly. Um, and, like, when I, I'm, like, very lucky that when I do stop drinking and I do get, like, sober, everything comes comes together pretty quick for me what do you mean like my life just gets better quick quickly so you see it i was trying to get joe list to do um psychedelics because you know there's like that 
I mean, I don't know what AA it's says It's not very about nice it. of you. Right. Well, but you know a lot of alcoholics are like, do yeah. smoke weed and do yeah, yeah. mushrooms. Yeah. Soda. And he's like, no. Soda does Molly and... and, and, and um, oh, God. Mo- not a lot, but Molly he will. Molly sober sounds mushrooms terrible. And, and, um, and weed. It's just like a fucking fun... Fun night, but whatever. But he can't handle alcohol. Yeah. So he's just like, there's, but you know, there's a lot of people like that, right? I know. That just do so. So I was like, Joe, it'd be nice if you could do shrooms with us. You know, it's like we don't even drink while we're doing it. Like, I get that you're not, but like, I don't know how sober you are, but like, we're all doing it. We'd like to include you. Yeah. Um, and he was like, I get it. I'd like to, but it's just like, I, the, the, the possible negatives of me like completely going back into this terrible place is just yeah. not worth the fun night with my friends. No, he's so great. Like I talk, I've talked to, I talked to him sometimes. I remember. That's a Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's just always so helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think he like enjoys being a help to people that are struggling with mm-hmm. it. Makes you feel good. To help somebody else do it. Mm-hmm. Damn. Are you a sponsor to anybody? No. Do you have a sponsor? You're a program person? Yeah, I do a 12-step thing. You do a 12-step thing, right? You're not even allowed to say... It's interesting. I just did a podcast with Jehovah's Witnesses, and then <laughs> they don't have birthdays, but like... What? They're, yeah, they're not allowed to celebrate birthdays. That's like part of their religion. But then they do these loopholes like that. Mm. <laughs> they go, I'm just glad you were born on this day <laughs> 22 years ago. <laughs> I'm just really happy in this, this day. This isn't today. a gift. I yeah. found it. <laughs> this is unrelated. It's just a day present. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, that's really interesting. Do you think you're going to relapse again? I hope not. Yeah, I hope not too. But how, how do you stay clear of I feel of like it? we need a good cop because you're just the bad cop. Well, I mean, I'm just like, <laughs> just kidding. you know. Um, no, I stay away. You just have to like... Yeah, it, you gotta like stay close to like your last drink in a way mentally. Like you have to remember. Remember, God, that fucking sucked. There's this Jill Sobel song about um about she had one song on the Clueless soundtrack, and then I got her album because I was just stealing albums at the time. But uh, song about uh, this ex boyfriend smile and how much she missed it, and then like calling him to get back together. And then real, oh, that's right. You were a terrible person. Like you forget that part, so you got to hold on to that, so you don't yeah, fuck yeah, up yeah, yeah, relationship yeah. wise. And I assume it's the same. I should thing. listen to that song. I'll send it to you. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just like that. So yeah, I guess that's a good way. Hold on to your last drink. You have to remember it, and like you just have to remember like the negatives. You it's like weighing it out. It's like the, it's the same thing with like a relationship. Like it's toxic. Don't go back to it. Right. And like the thing with for me drinking and like also I'm epileptic and basically the epile- I go to the epilepsy center at NYU and they're just like they'll say to me because I've my seizures have started to get worse and oh, I'll really? have them like when I'm sober and they're just like you can't they're like you're like you will they're like if you wanted to drink like you could drink two drinks a week and I'm like I I'm not a psycho I'm not gonna drink two drinks a week like I'm yeah, sort of a psychopath yeah um, yeah who the fuck does that I'm not a nerd oh, and beer. um. So, nerd, nerd, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so they're just like, you have, like, you're gonna, like, die. You need to be sober. Like, you don't have a choice. Well, you, everyone has a choice, but. Damn. So, basically, yeah, and then I'm on, like, a bunch of meds and stuff. Do you feel like. Um, for my seizures. So, and they don't work if I'm drinking or. Oh. Or I'll forget to take them. And so, that's what it is. Do you feel, what time? Oh. Do you feel like uh, at all, fun. like, so I know people that have quit comedy. And I, I've always wanted to ask them, but I feel bad for them. And then they'll be around it still, you know, they'll talk and they'll be around it. They'll mention their days of comedy. They always mention like when I was a comedian, this, and, and it's almost offensive because like you are an open micer and mm-hmm. you're telling like seven, eight, 10 year plus comedians, anything. It's like, that's just straight mansplaining. And yeah. I've seen it from women too. Like, shut the fuck up. Who the fuck are you? You did like 40 open mics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a manager that always do that. And it's like, shut up. We're mocking you behind your back telling us this. But like the people who quit, the people who actually did it for a while, I just feel bad for them. And I feel like they can feel that from us. Yeah. To be like, we pity you. Is there any, and I'm not trying to say you're bad at all, but do you have any feeling of like, like, this is the wrong wording, but like I'm a loser because I couldn't handle it. Um, no, I don't have a feeling like that. But like you know, sometimes I'm not proud of like behaviors from when I drank. But what mm-hmm. I what I I know I'm a good person, and I, I know like what I what I like to th- what I like what I say is I say you know I'm not a bad person, but sometimes I I do bad things. 
You know what I mean? And I think that drinking makes me not the person I want to be. So I like myself much more when I'm sober. And so once once you stay, once I've stayed sober for, uh, you know, an extended period of time, it hasn't been, you know, necessarily too long, you get to a place where you're like, you start to feel your potential and you feel good and you just are, you feel your potential. So then once you start drinking again, you feel it go away. Oh, interesting. And you're just like, why? You're like, it's so much cooler when you can feel a potential. And then when you, and then it's like you're taking it away from yourself. It's like you're in charge. So Damn. I don't feel like a loser. I feel like, I feel like a loser when I'm drinking. And every time I relapse, I feel like a fucking loser. You do it and you wake up like, what the fuck was I that? Was like, I was like, why did I do that? What a waste. And why do you do it? Is I'll it just, just like a moment of weakness? Just a moment of weakness. And I'll be lazy. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go through a breakup. I'll, I'll think it's uh, a good excuse to drink. I'll, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's just, it's a lack of maturity. We had a friend when we started. Jim Painter was a big influence on all of us. And he was sober. I yeah. think he was like a child burnout. You know, and um, he would go on dates with girls and he would, he would go to bars. He was fine. You know, he'd be around us drinking and smoking. Just wouldn't touch it. And he would be on dates and they'd be like, you having a drink? He's like, no, I don't drink. Or no, thanks. I'm not drinking today. What he would just, and then one day he just didn't feel like telling a girl that he didn't drink. He so he's like, all right. And he was like, then there was that like week of like, maybe I can handle this. And within like four days, he was just like, yeah, that's like what problematically happens. drinking. I remember I drank in front of this guy. I got a beer, and I got I drank one beer, and it was uh, like the hardest thing I've ever done. Stop right there. Just have one beer because he's sober, and I, I said to him, I said uh, after I drank the beer, I was like, could an alcoholic do that? <laughs> to, to have only one drink. Yeah. <laughs> and he's then you're like, all proud. Okay, like, he's like, okay, psycho. Not even thinking of those terms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rogan wants early on his podcast, like like first 10 podcasts i showed up to his house and he would call me a pothead he was like fucking pothead and um and not in a bad but just like i used it too much and i was like i'm not i haven't gotten high all day like what are you talking about and he goes yeah you're not supposed to that's not a bragging moment that you didn't get high in the day that you're in right now like <laughs> that you're you're yeah. that that's your line of like you think you're better than you're, you're a pothead I, I always joke people are like how's your sobriety i'm like it's amazing i haven't had a drink since breakfast <laughs> it's a good day <laughs> Damn, man, that's really interesting about that shit. So, what was your favorite one? Favorite rehab? Yeah. I mean, looking back on it, I have to say it was probably my first one because it was the only one I learned anything at. And your, what about your last one? How did that make it stick? Nothing. Did? I didn't go to rehab. I haven't been to rehab in years. Well, you called them and said, like, I need help. Oh, that one, and then that one, um, what did I do after that one? Well, that one I left, and after that, I don't even remember. I went to so many. Who else was at these rehabs? Was it like oh, old after, people? Oh, after sorry. that one, I went to, I had to go to like this hospital thing. And then after that, I had to go to get back. That was like a sober living house. To okay. get back into that, I had, it was like a, it's called like Eden Hill for Girls. It was like this like house. It was like the guy who used to own like the lotto or something. It was their house. And then they sold it and became a rehab or a sober house. And, that place was chill because it was like in the countryside. It's in the same town I went to boarding school actually. And they would like let I would like wanted to take riding lessons and stuff, and they're like, "Yeah, you can you can fucking do that." And um, to get back into that one, I had to go to this other rehab. I got kicked out of there. That's so because I refused to eat. Did you just crash. What? Did you just crash. No. Do I seem like I did? Yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like a baby. I'm like a baby. <laughs> I like get like really hyper and then I fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I was like, what just happened? You know, did I alarm you? <laughs> it was just like a sudden drop of energy. Yeah. No. Uh, who else was there at these rehabs? Like, mm. what, I assume rich people. Just drug addicts. Yeah, I know. Was that know hyper that. enough? But like, oh, oh, was it older, younger? All ages. All ages. You saw withered people and you saw like yeah, young. Yeah, my favorite burnout. guy was this guy at the first one in Connecticut. Warren, I think was his name. He had like sold a bunch of tech companies or something. And he, so like in the group, they would like, everyone would like share a story. And then they would, everyone would say like, 
after their story, you'd be like, the counselor would be like, who's here for Warren? And everyone would raise their hand and be like, I am. And I remember one time Warren was like, he had been to that treatment center like four times and he was like, it got really, but he's crying. He's like, it got really bad this time. He's like, he's like, so like, I always start off with like one cat. And then as my drinking gets bad, I wake up and there's like eight cats. And he goes, and then I had this one cat, Ferguson, and he, Ferguson was getting so fat. So I took Ferguson to the, and, and I threw up on Ferguson one day and I threw up. <laughs> No, 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 no. So, no, no, no. So, Ferguson had gotten really fat, and so he took Ferguson to the vet. And he's like, why is Ferguson so fat? And the vet was like, because this cat is a woman, and this cat is pregnant. Oh, my God. And he was like, he had no idea, because he was so fucked up. And so, he brought the cat home, and then he said one day he was so fucked up that he threw up on the cat, and he started crying, and he goes, I knew it was bottom. I'm going to throw up on my pregnant cat. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great bottom. (laughs) <laughs> He's like, I knew it was time to get back to Mountainside. <laughs> and then they go, who's here for Warren? And we're all like, we are. Warren! <laughs> <laughs> I love the people who kill it at the stories. I did Al-Anon for a little bit. Yeah. And, um, you know, family and friends of. Of course. And then, um, but man, the difference in the good shares versus the boring shares. Oh, yeah. I like, oh, those boring shares are like, minimize this. I kill oh. some. I kill sometimes. I it, bet. I kill. You're a yeah. trained performer. Um. Yeah. What the were we talking itself. about? Oh, the good shares and the bad shares. Yeah. So I've, I've like gone to a meeting and I've like done something. I'm like, oh, that killed. And then, um, and then I got to a, a show and I tried it and it bombs. I'm like, okay. And uh, you know, I've 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 said on stage like, well, that worked. Not to work here. No, you fucking did it again. Oh, sorry. No, I got to put another marker down. Sorry. 135. Oh, oh okay. I just want you to work. Yeah, well, I'm doing it. Um I remember sorry, one time. Sorry, what were you saying? I was writing down notes and I didn't fucking miss what you said. I would say like I would say something in a meeting and it would yeah. kill and then I'd go on stage and I'd say the same thing and it bomb. And I'd be like, that killed in the meeting. Dude, one of the best sets I saw, there was this. I want another cigarette. Go for it. There was this. See, um, this very, is just a test anyway, so we, we don't need it. We have to do a whole other episode? This is a test episode? No, this, I'm testing these road oh, wireless I was things like, whoa. for yoga. <laughs> um, um, oh. Um, there was this. The smoke is blowing at you. Well, I'm not in the program. So can I, am I allowed to say I went to an AA show? You do whatever you want. I mean, you I don't want to ruin that. anybody's fucking thing. But any, don't say right. who is on it. Okay, it was a great show it was run <laughs> by this guy who was a writer and a, and a all comedian. his jokes are about the trans community. <laughs> and and um and um got that. It was great. They were so down because like you can't say anything to offend like a heavy user. No, it's because it's the same way like when you're around comics, it's, you can't really offend. I know, so you go so, so dark when you're trying like, to like make you, comics laugh. When you're just like sitting with comics, like you can't offend anyone. You can't offend them. It's too hard to offend them. You offend them by like focusing on you when you make a bad joke. So it's like if I'm making a bad joke and I'm like waiting for your response, that's the, it's like dude, you're they're offending like, me. They're like, like, I don't want to laugh, but you put them in like, the spot. Why are you doing a bit? Yeah, why are you doing a bit right here? That's a, it's offensively bad. Like, yeah. Humor, yeah, that's the only way to offend a comic. Well, it's interesting because like when you have Stay conversations with, with people who aren't comics, like um, you kind of forget the boundaries. Because in comedy, you, you before you even know someone, you know them because like, I'll see someone stand up and I'll be like, oh, I know this person was molested. I know this right. person was an uh-huh. alcoholic. I know this before about this uh-huh. before you even meet them. So it's like your relationship is already so intimate. So there's no boundaries. You can be like, oh, that's hilarious when your uncle raped you. Yeah. You know, like like we were saying earlier. And so like then you meet someone who's A not like that. Person. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, hey, your uncle ever raped you. <laughs> they talk about these masks people wear and that you're different people for different people. So like the way you talk to me or Karen Fian or probably those are two different things probably. And then the way you talk to your mom is another different thing. Yeah. And what's so hard about social media is that you have all these different groups watching you. So, yeah. But normally you wear these different masks and you're, you act differently. In front of, but now it's almost like you need to be one thing for all people. So it doesn't allow for the outsider shit. Yeah. Um, because then people are like, oh, that's horrible. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you weren't supposed to hear this. But isn't that why like once you build your own audience, yeah, it doesn't really audience. matter. The problem is now is people are taking what you say and then taking it to other audiences. <laughs> I feel like, look at the people like, how dare you? It's like, guys, we're doing something fun over here. Yeah. Get out of here. 
Yeah, and so that's why you should have to be all things to all people. And they asked Zuckerberg about it. He goes, you know, that's not a problem. There should only be one you to everyone. Mm-hmm. I want only one social you in life and social media, all of it. And you realize like, oh, we let a fucking highly autistic person build the way we're acting to each other. Totally. And I heard like, they're just talking to people about like, you know, um, celebrities having meltdowns and they're saying how... Um, I was very much defending the celebrities. I was like, people fuck up and they're like, you know, it's but it's their job to like, their one thing is like to not to not fuck up in the public eye type of thing. And I'm like, yeah, but like. But that's not realistic. It's not realistic. Like yeah, people like, snap. I, people I can't have a lot ever of be, pressure. Right, so you're like, your, your girlfriend's yelling at you. are like, fuck you. And like, God damn it, there's eight cameras on me. And you're like supposed to have those moments. You're supposed to be able to pass out drunk in the street and wake up like, fuck, I bottomed out. Without somebody saying, oh, that's Chloe doing that. Maybe they'll take a picture of like, look at this pass out drunk, which don't do. You know, in their worst Don't moments. Don't do it. But it's worse when they know it's you. Yeah. Specifically. And I'm like, come on, you guys. Everyone fucks up a little. Mm-hmm. You gotta let people learn from it. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. But um, Well, because that's the thing. I think when you are in a, an actor or public figure, I was saying this to my friend, like, uh, they, um, the media just dictates who you are. Like, they decide who you're going to be. Yeah, this is the type of person. They're a rebel. They're a this. They're, they're a this. They're, they're, they're dark, that. They're, uh-huh. Which is the same way when I was younger, when I like people were like, oh, she's a cokehead. Then I was like, I guess I'm the fuck up. So this is the role I'll play. Right. And then you have to be at that. So even if you're a fuck up, the reality is, you probably you were, but the reality is you're only a fuck up in some moments. Yeah, it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, you didn't get out of bed as a fuck up. You didn't put your shoes on as a fuck up. No. You put your shoes on as a regular person. And then like you had more fuck up moments than some of your other high school friends who weren't known as a fuck up, but they had some. Or like they didn't get caught. Or they didn't get caught. Right. Drunk drivers is like, it's like, yeah, you. we've all driven drunk, but like you got into an accident. And yeah, like kid. Mel Gibson, that wasn't, you know. Exactly. You got caught. And you it's got like, caught and now, now blaming it's the your, Jews yeah. for every war. <laughs> Some people do that behind closed doors. Yeah, you were, you uh, you got a caught on a fucking, <laughs> on a cop cam doing it. That's the, unfortunate. Doesn't mean the Jews didn't start those wars. <laughs> Holocaust never happened. It was exaggerated. I heard it was a few hundred people. It's like my sex life exaggerated. <laughs> Sorry, um, just kidding. Damn, Chloe, this is all real interesting shit. I knew you were like a like a kind of a wild. I don't want to say fuck up because it's a negative now, but like uh, you used to get down. Mm-hmm. You had your moments in the fucking. I'm like an ogre. I'm an onion. I have layers. Days. Yeah. Shrek. Because you're like you're manic for sure. They, really? Manic, manic, uh, 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 manic. You have a manic um, presence, um, vibe. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Ugh. Well, I'm working on that. That's because I've been so in and out of being sober. ADD ish. Yeah, it that. for sure, for sure. It's like, it's no, like, not manic. It's not uh, manic. It's not manic. But it's still like figure, hyper, 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 hyper. I'm still figuring out who I am. Yeah, that's what it is too. And there's that too. When you hear like Soder and Nate talking about those days, and now Nate's a sober Family Guy. Yeah. Who loves golf. Yeah. And like, and then you're like, oh, is that the same person? You're like, sort of, but like yeah. you can shift and become different people. And then Yeah. Like, I don't know. I want it all. It'll level out if the longer I like figure to stay like on a path. Cause like right now I'm still like figuring out like who I am, what I want to talk about, what I, you know what I mean? Like who's the right type of person for me to date? What's, what's right for me because I'm so used to just living in all the chaos because that's what I felt the most comfortable in. Yeah. But now I'm starting to feel more comfortable not in chaos. Right, right. And it, it, and it, then it did that make you will, comfortable before. And yeah, now that's what does. I liked. That's what I, like, I sought. I yeah. sought chaos. And now I'm starting to see the other side of the coin and be like, I prefer this. And that will transfer over into, you know, even like conversation. And Well, you see people like, during COVID or any time they leave New York. And they want to go to a small town life. It's like, but I thought you loved like the party scene and like doing whatever. And it's like, yeah. And then one day I, I just didn't. And I stayed in New York for four extra years. And then it's like, they're like, I just want the suburbs to stay with my family. And mm-hmm. you're like, and then you're Bobby Kelly goes from Hell's Kitchen up to fucking Westchester. Yeah, I'm just like, I want a family. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that seems awful to me. But I'm sure one day I'll be like, yeah, that's what I want. You see these old people in Manhattan and you're like, you've stayed too long. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be here anymore. Like, aren't you? Don't you just want to get? Because like, you know, when, with a walker, with a cane. Like, the, why are you in Manhattan? You know, when you're in the city for like an extended period of time and you're starting to go crazy and you don't know why, and then you just get out of the city and you're like, huh? Oh, you're me. like, this is why. You're like, I need to make sure I leave every once in a while. Every once yeah. in a while, just for my once own sanity. Once a month, you gotta get to the woods. Get to the woods, man. Yeah, yeah. get thee to nature. Is that a term? Okay. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to promote? What are you doing, like besides oh. stand up? I have a new show. 
Okay, I'll talk about this in the intro, but go ahead. Tell, I have a new show on my Instagram. It's called News for Women. News I, for Women. Yeah, I and I put it on YouTube, but whatever. And I break down the news like so women can get it. What do you mean? Oh, to make it accessible to them. I just joke through, through a women's through my perspective. Like I'll say things like, "Oh, do you know who needs a pedicure? Syria." That's great. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's your Instagram? It's at Chloe Labranch. C H L O E L A L A. Capital B R A N C H E. Yeah, correct. My social. No. Is the B capitalized? Yeah. The L and the B are capitalized. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You have three capitals. Do you have a middle name? Spar. S P A H R. Four caps. That's great. Thank you. You're like J R R Tolkien. Hell yeah. Um, that's cool. And you got on some traction out of it. People like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been really like not consistent with it because. Um, because I just was in and out of drinking and stuff, but like when I started putting on TikTok in like a week, I got like twelve thousand followers just from doing. I like just from the way you're describing it. I like dealing with the news in a non like the way comedians have been dealing with it, mm-hmm. which is super serious. It's like guys, just make jokes about it. I just like sit in my room and I put on like a dress and like I just have like this news for women thing, and I'm just like, hi, welcome to News for Women. I'm Chloe. I'm an alcoholic, <laughs> and then I'll just be like, say something just like a news article that's just like, and I'll just like. Basically, it's like I'll take like the New York Post is just the best headlines ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's yeah, kind of like a page too. It's like my version of the New York Post. <laughs> they have like they always have catchphrases as their headlines. It's, it's like a like hybrid rhymes. of the New York Post and uh, and and back page. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. So um, they always sometimes they have like three let four words in a row that starts with D, like dumb Democrat deals with <laughs> distress or something like that. And you're like, who was writing these? Are great. Um, yeah, I'm, I, we need more comedy like that, where it's like, don't fucking wallow in the fucking news. Have fun with it. What are we doing here? Yeah. It wasn't manic. That was the wrong word to use. Is it? Hyper. Yeah. No, I've like gone to like, you know, all these doctors and stuff, and it's, I'm actually like, I don't have any, I'm not bipolar or anything. That I've just been diagnosed as like anxiety disorder and like depression. And it's, it's hard to even, because I'm so like, uh, I'm just, it's, I've been so up and down just because I've been so in and out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right now I'm chilling. I feel good. Well, <laughs> Chloe, I hope you last in your sobriety. For real. Thank you, Ari. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never even drank with you, so I don't even miss that that part of that that side. You know, so like, uh, yeah, I hope you get there. It sounds like you have a lot of potential if you just fucking stay on the path. But I hope Thanks, you get dude. there. Journey. Yeah, I know it's hard. Journey. <laughs> um, all right. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, that's it. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Is there anything else? Like, no. Anything massive we missed about fucking rehab? I mean, uh, there's just. Uh, I mean, I know we probably talk for days about uh, it. Days of diaries and diaries. Do you keep diaries? Every single day of every. Do a book si- about it. Every single rehab, every every single day. Really? I have a diary from every. It's like some of the diaries are like you can't even read it because I'm like, I am on so much pills right now from detox and it's just scribbles. Wow. It's pretty fun. Dude, I'll take notes in these little moleskines. This is my favorite weapon for comedy. Um. And I'll take them with me because they fit in your pocket, right? I have little mini books like that too. Right. I want to show and you. And you can't. People take notes on your phone, but then everybody thinks you're ignoring them. If you do this, people are like, okay, they're writing a note down. But um, yours is just a hit list. Yeah. So people this annoying is, you. Like when I'm on mushrooms versus not, I'll show you a different different. Uh, what do I got here? Okay, here it's just a bit list, so you can kind of read that. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna here. use. I'm gonna use all those. Yeah. Whatever. But like <laughs> the handwriting is great. Now this is just mushroom writing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, like sloppier. Yeah, you're just like, uh, sometimes I can't even read it. I used to like try to like write when I was drunk sometimes, and I would, every time I'd look back, I'd be like, it's all poop jokes. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> Shit, you would laugh that way. All poop drunk. jokes. It's uh, all about Sarah McLaughlin abusing her dogs and poop <laughs> jokes. That's all I write about when I'm drinking. Uh, um, all right. Hell yeah, Chloe. Thank you. Cool. I appreciate you doing this. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. What a fucking good episode, huh? God damn, Chloe. Just, I mean, if, if you're listening to this and you just want little short clips, uh, I will be putting clips on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Ari Shafir. Uh, just tons of them. She's got so full of fun stories. And it wasn't like she was bragging or anything. 
What a fucking wild, crazy world. I mean, it sounds awesome. It sounds awesome. I like music festivals. Rehab, I mean, seems like uh, one of the best music festivals, minus the music, I guess, anywhere. I do love the names of all those clubs in the aughts. Here were the names she used. By the way, don't forget, go uh, follow her online, at Chloe LeBranch. Um, Kane, Marquis, Bungalow, Butter. <laughs> the nightclub names are so fucking stupid. Shush. Shush nightclub. Only at the MGM. Vegas is full of them. I mean, it's just the place. This is what all... I, I mean, I got to read that book about the arts... Uh, LCD sound system and the fucking yeah, yeah, yeahs and all that. Meet me in the bathroom. I got to read that book. Who wrote that? You want to be on my podcast? It'll force me to read the, po- the fucking book. Um, okay, it just seems fucking awesome. And if 16-year-olds can get in there and just party, it seems like Studio 54 and and, and 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 some places else I've been across the world. It just seems like a fucking great place. God, fentanyl's ruining everything. Drug dealers, do your part. We want to keep partying. Help us out. Test your fucking fentanyl. Make it fucking free of... Oh, test your Coke. I get it. Cut it. Cut it for sure. Uh, uh, it's not like I'm against profit margins. I, I get the idea of profit margins, but cut it with talcum powder. Nobody fucking went to the hospital for snorting too much talcum powder. Claims are fucking... No basis in reality or science. Has anyone gone to the hospital for snorting too much talcum powder? Then how about baby powder? Whatever it is, or laxatives. <laughs> Cut it with baby laxatives, make everybody shit. That's a fun prank. Fentanyls, it's just like, it, it's funny, but not to, it, not, not to enough people. Um, anyway, that's the episode, everybody. Don't forget to get tickets to my Wilbur show, uh, December 9th at AriShafir.com. Also, uh, two shows in November, uh, Orlando and Tampa. Steve Simone will be opening for me for both of those. We are moving. Again, we are moving the podcast to Tuesday starting in November so that Marissa can have a weekend. Spend time fucking her girlfriend. She wants to fucking munch box, and her girlfriend's off on, on Saturday and Sunday. And she goes, it's the best time to munch box, you know, to get in there, fucking deep tongue it, you know. She goes, and I'm working all the time. I can still get the work done, but it's just hard to concentrate while a fucking pussy's fucking licking my clit, you know. And I'm like, that's fair. Um... Anyway, um, so we're moving to Tuesdays, and that's it. Subscribe, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ari Shafir for content every week or so. Uh, a preview of next week's episode will be up there. Fuck it, right now. Want to watch next week's episode? I'll have it up there. Marissa, can you equalize it with no intro, outro, no ads, just the fucking episode? Yeah, let's do that. Um, it's good about the mafia and stuff, and it's about growing and 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 uh, what was the word? Discovery, um, right? Discovery. Yeah, with Danny to Anthony DeVito. It was a fun one too. Two good ones, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for our. We have real. I know for Ari Shafir Skep. This has been Ari Shafir Skeptic episode four six four fit forty three. Rehab rehash. That sucked. Ah, that's a fucking shitty, stupid name. I don't know. Maybe just rehab. Rehab for Chloe LeBranch. I'm Marie Shafir. Saying so long. <laughs>